The following is a Rogers Sports presentation. on Rogers Television. I'm your host, Scott Van Slyke, and tonight we're coming to you live from the Brampton Center for Sports and Entertainment, where tonight the Brampton Mid-Time will play host to their Western Conference rivals, the London Knights. These two teams are certainly no strangers to one another as they met last Friday night at London's Ice House, where the Knights were able to pull off a thrilling 5-4 last-minute victory. The game also featured two of the brightest young stars in the OHL, as Brampton, forward, or Brampton native rather, Rick Nash, a 16-year-old forward with the Knights, tallied four points in the game, including the game winner, past the battalion sensation goalie, Brad Topping. These two teams certainly uh, have playoff implications going into tonight's matchup. The Bataan currently sit fourth in the Western Conference with 66 points, tied with the Windsor Spitfires, three points behind the Guelph Storm. Whereas the Knights, it's pretty much do or die for the rest of the season as they sit in the ninth place in the Western Conference, three points behind the Kitchener Rangers. Right now, we're going to send it upstairs for an intrepid play-by-play -play team of Doug Anderson and Mike Hancock. Take it away, gentlemen. Thanks, Scott. Hi again, everybody. Hammer, welcome up in the booth once again. You know, it's nice to see on OHL Primetime, Brian Finley between the pipes for the battalion. Yeah, here on OHL Primetime in Brampton, it's going to be our first look at the superstar net miner, of course, acquired from the Barry Colts at the trade deadline. And uh, he's been solid between the pipes so far for the battalion. It'll be interesting to see if he can lift them to victory over the Knights tonight here in Brampton, much different than he did a week ago in London. Five seconds into this first period of hockey, the Knights throw five fresh bodies over the boards. Deep inside the battalion end, first shot, Finley kicks the second one away. Turner fans on the shot, and here comes Chris Rowan, back to pick it up, inside his own zone. Through the middle is McSwain to hobble, back for McSwain, and Chris Rowan! Battalion jump out to a quick one nothing lead. Excellent action at both ends of the ice there. Brian Finley steps up huge in the early seconds of this game. And then the Branton Battalion able to turn it around, take it up to the other end of the ice, and beat Aaron Molnar, who's appeared in all 59 games so far this year for the London Knights. And Chris Rowan was the guy who started all that, moving up the left side, moving the puck quickly through the neutral zone. And the Brampton Battalion are out to a 1-0 lead here, just 28 seconds into the first period. As we take a look at it again there, the battalion with some great finish here already, just 28 seconds in, but maybe the biggest story was Brian Finley slamming the door at the other end of the ice, enabling the battalion to move the puck up the other way and get the scoring chance. McClement and Sherbin move in the face-off circle. Boy, Joel Sherbin has been a battalion killer here in the Brampton Center. Always successful. Davies has it at center ice. Tries to get it across the blue line. It's dumped in. And again, the Knights change on the fly. Play goes into the corner. This is bonus cross-ice pass. Henrik kicks it into the corner. Back to pick that one up. For the Knights is John Eminger. Eminger plays it to the open wing. Battalion will bank it back right in. That is Rafi Torres dumping it around the corner. Bateman leaves it for Van Lusen. Aaron Van Lusen steps out of the corner. Still has the puck. Hounded from behind by Weidman. Van Lusen gets it away. Goes behind Molnar and behind the net. Bateman can't control it. Klesla can't keep it in at the blue line. And here come the Knights. This is Ryan Held across center. He'll try to dump it in and head to the bench. And Maleko will leave it for Klesla behind the net. 18.30 to go in the first period. Battalion up by one. And our first power play opportunity of the game comes at the hands of the London Knights. Bit of pushing and shoving after the whistle. But we'll see the battalion power play. An interesting penalty there as the uh, Rostislav Klesla moving the puck out of the Brampton end. And it was just Logan Hunter. Just laid the stick, really. It looked like at the back of the skates or in the skates of Rostislav Klesla. And down went Rusty. And the battalion will go up a man here on the power play. A minute 29 into this first period and already up a goal, leading 1-0. After Chris Rowan buried the biscuit to start things off. So with Hunter in the box, clearing it from the center ice area, gets caught up in the... Skates of Eminger and has played into the corner. Finley will leave it behind the net for Malenko. 
with room to roam. And here's the captain of the battalion up along the board for Torres. Rafi goes wide, leaves it for Van Lusen. Back behind the net, Torres has the puck. Follows it up to the top of the circle. Torres plays it in the corner for Bateman. Good cross ice pass, goes off a stick, in front. Van Lusen can't center it out, and it's cleared off the near boards and down the ice. May not have looked pretty there, but the London Knights able to clear the zone out to the battalion with some good traffic in front of the net. Buck 20 remaining in this battalion power play. Kleslow with the outlet pass. Hobble with a burst of speed to the outside. Lucas Hobble short side. Van Lusen centers it out in front. Backhand pass. Molnar gets a piece of that, and it goes just wide. And London clears the zone, relieving the pressure. Boy, the battalion have had some great opportunities. They're just flying out there right now. Jason Maleko with the puck. Stops. Tries to turn around. Gets tied up by Stathopoulos. Centering pass out in front. Back and they score! Short-handed goal for the Knights. Coming off the stick of Brampton native Rick Nash. I was just about to say, as the London Knights cleared the puck out of the zone, interesting to see rookie Ricky Nash also uh, playing in the short-handed situation. And they're definitely not the guy you want to cough the puck up to. Short-handed or even strength or otherwise. Right there, he was just left all alone after the giveaway to backhand that puck over top of Brian Finley. And things are tied up at one as Nash picks up a shorthanded goal a minute 10 into the Brampton power play. So we're tied at one, 17-21 to go in the first period. Boy, soft hands from Rick Nash on the backhand. Stathopoulos and McClement in the face-off circle with Brampton taking this one. Harrison backpedals inside his own zone, sets up a breakout pattern. He's got a streaking hobble, feeds him the pass. Hobble cuts to the middle, has it poked away from him by Nash and bounced back into Brampton's end. A couple of fresh bodies hop the boards for London. Harrison tips it ahead. McClemmon can't catch up to it, and Sherman retreats to pick it up for the Knights. Touches it, icing is called, and they'll bring it all the way back inside the battalion end. Interesting to note there, Dougie. It appears as though the London Knights have the fourth best penalty kill in the league on the road here. And we've definitely seen they've done a great job so far killing off a minute 39 in this Brampton man advantage, but also putting a puck in the net. And it was interesting to see there as well after off the draw when Brampton gained control of the puck. Uh, they took a little bit more time setting things up coming out of their own zone. They backpedaled, got behind their own net, circled the wagon, so to speak, and you know, made sure everything was organized before breaking out of their own zone as to not, well, cough up the puck like they did earlier on the power play. Sherbert and Bois up front for the Knights. Eminger manning the point with Weidman. Trying to kill off this final 21 second Brampton power play. Off the face off, slides just by on the glove side. Maliko with time as Hobble comes back. Gets fed the outlet pass, tries the sidestep to check. Bois gets a piece of it and hops up into Brampton's bench. And another stoppage in play. So the battalion will make changes here as really didn't get anything going on the power play short of a little bit of very early pressure on the man advantage. And now it's just 11 seconds left. It looks as though this man advantage will go for not as uh, Brampton puts out their crash and bang line here with 11 seconds to go. And the penalty to Logan Hunter. Loose puck picked up by Klesla. Steps across the London blue line. Attacks the defense, but a good job. Clears it up and over the boards into the stand. So a souvenir with 16.32 to go in the first period. We're all tied at one in the Brampton Center. You're watching OHL Primetime live on Rogers Sports. Scott Van like the hammer, Mike Hancock, and myself, Doug Anderson, bringing you all the action. It'll be interesting to see here where the faceoff comes, Dougie, because, of course, Logan Hunter, just one second left in his penalty now. He'll be poised to hop out of the penalty box. And it's almost maybe a good thing here for the battalion that the faceoff isn't all the way deep into the London end, and the fact that they will be able to likely eliminate that breakaway as we saw the Knights there try to win the draw forward and spring Hunter for the battalion able to recover. Thompson with the puck at the side, leaves it. LaRue has it. LaRue tries to feed it back to Thompson behind the net. Does a good job to get away from his man, but London will clear it to the blue line. Paul Flash does a good job to keep it in. Harrison retreats, picks it up in the neutral zone. Harrison with time. Leaves it for LaRue at his own blue line. Jonah LaRue back for Jay Harrison. 
They'll backtrack and start all over again. <laughs> Team skating five aside after London tied the game on a shorthanded goal. Quickly run over the scratches here tonight. Of course, Anthony Marshall, who had seen the bulk of the backup duties while Brian Finley was hurt, he scratched tonight, as well as Alex McDonnell for the battalion. On the side of the London Knights, Matt Cooper, their third string goaltender, he scratched tonight, as well as Bobby Turner, Mike Clark, and Mike Anning. The other three skating scratches tonight for the London Knights. Interesting with Mike Clark and Bobby Turner not in the lineup. Those are two defensemen missing from the Knights lineup, so we'll have to see if that votes toward the end of the game. Face off deep inside of the Brampton end. Again, Sherbert and McClement going head to head. McClement's been successful the first three times off the face off. Goes off a of boot, comes back to the point. Tees it up, there's a shot. Finley gets a piece of that one, kicks it aside. He went down a little gingerly on that one, Hammer, as it's played to the center ice area. Yeah, I don't know if that puck caught him on the inside of the leg, but he was definitely slow getting up. Chambers to Sherbin, inside his own zone. Vardy will step across center and play it in the corner. Maleko retreats to pick it up for the battalion. Maleko bounces it off the boards, kept in at the blue line, and the shot goes wide. Chambers again tries to clear it to the front of that. McClemens there to pick it up for the battalion. McClement with a little room. Gets the pass back through the center ice area to the outside. McClement cuts to the middle. Still lost control just in front of the net and couldn't get the shot away. Stathopoulos makes a move, cuts through the neutral zone. London changing on the fly. Stathopoulos will carry it in and play the shot right on net. Maleko dumps it aside, and here's Rafi Torres with the outlet pass. Left the side, here's Bateman on a break. He's got Torres with him. Can't get him the pass. Boy, Rafi had the whole left side to himself in front of Molnar. Almost looked like Bateman zigged when he should have zagged there, Dougie. In front of that's the thumpless shot. Fintley gets a piece of that one. Centering pass, Nash picks it up with time. Back for Weidman, lets it fly. Finley got a piece of that. Leclerc tries to steer it aside now. Aaron Lobb comes away with the puck. Gets it back to the point. Eminger plays it back around the net. Sathopoulos centers it out in front. Nash is shot. Finley with the save. Lobb gets a piece of it, and the net gets run over, and a stoppage in play as Finley comes up big three times for the battalion, robbing Nash. Finley's had to come up big now. London out shooting Brampton 10-3 already, just a little over five minutes into this first period, and talked about Finley getting up a little bit slow. you got to wonder how much that groin injury is still bothering him. And what kind of pressure was on him after being out for two weeks? What kind of pressure was on him to get back in the lineup as soon as possible? Well, I mean, you had to know. I mean, he's, uh, he was out for a long time. And, I mean, full marks to Brad Topping, though. I mean, he filled in, did a uh, More than better than average job between the pipes over that 15-16 uh, game stretch. The Topping had to fill in for Finley until he was ready to go. But, like we said, he caught that. It looked like he caught that one shot just inside the leg. And also, he's just been a little bit slow getting up. So we'll have to see how that progresses throughout tonight's game. Puck drop, play goes in the corner. McSwain bounces it around the boards. Cleared along the boards, Harrison leaving it. McSwain gets across center and dumps it into the corner. Sellian plays it around the glass, bounces it through the neutral zone. Foot raises, flashes the first one back. He's watched closely as it bounced back off the glass. And Sellian has it again. Inside his own zone. With time, looking for Davies. That pass goes off a stick. Hobble can't control it. And it goes back inside of the London end. Turner takes the bump from Rowan. Boy, Chris Rowan looks like he's a step ahead of the play all tonight. He's got a good burst of speed in his legs. McSwain across center, has it picked off. Burnham can't control it, and finally held, fires it deep inside, battalion in. Flash for Harrison. Harrison, outlet pass for Hobble. Hobble, expecting the check, couldn't get it across the blue line, and finally, Junkins will take it at the center ice area for London. Offside is called as Held was still inside the blue line as Hunter picked the puck across the blue line for the stoppage in play with 13-10 to go here in the first period at the Brampton Center. 
Shots on goal still sit at 10-3. Brian Finley seeing the bulk of the work so far between the pipes. Of course, we talked a little bit about Aaron Molnar. He's appeared in one shape or another in every single game that the London Knights have played this year. And rumor has it he may, in fact, play in every single game for the London Knights this year as they're still trying to chase down that last playoff spot in the West Conference. Brampton gets it across the London blue line. Floater pass goes through the neutral zone. Back to pick it up for the battalion is Travis Perrin. Leaves it for Clayton. Clayton back inside his own zone for Malenko. With time for Perrin. Clayton along the boards. He's stopped up by Chambers. Perrin will play it to the other side. This is Jonah LaRue tipping it for Malenko. Maleko gets it out for Thompson. Thompson going near side for Clayton. He steps across the blue line, telegraph that, and Chambers with a great opportunity knocks it away, and the shot goes wide and around the board. Penalty going against the London Knights as uh, they touch the puck. That was Ryan Held, and an interference call. We'll see Held going to the box. Yeah, he hauled down Jonah LaRue there going to the net on the far side of the ice, so the battalion I hope to fare a little bit better on this power play opportunity. Of course, last time earlier on in this game, Brampton's only power play opportunity so far. The Knights were able to strike shorthanded. Ricky Nash doing the damage. And the Battalion will have a key faceoff here. It'll be just inside the London blue line. Rafi Torres to take the draw for the Battalion. And these are the big three for the Battalion. Torres, Bateman, Van Lusen. Sherbin wins that face off, shoots at the length of the ice where Finley will leave it for Malenko. Van Lusen through the middle, leaves it for Torres, sidesteps a check, knocked off his stick, and Klesla gathers it up. Torres still in across the blue line, offside is called as he knocked, he got his stick knocked out of his hands and was trapped inside. We'll have to see if the battalion do what they usually tend to do on the power play and work the puck through the point quite a bit. Get Rustislav Klesla free to take that big shot from the point. So far, again, 18 seconds into the second power play advantage. The battalion have failed to establish any kind of presence here on the power play. Nash plays it off the draw through to the neutral zone. Klesla steps across center and rips it around the dasher. On the far side as Bateman lets it go. Torres plays it back in behind the net. Van Lusen leaves it for Bateman. Back to Van Lusen, leaves it for Torres. Torres with it to the point for Klesla. Back for Torres. He's got time. Torres for Klesla. Turner carries it across the blue line, poked away from him and bounced to the neutral zone. Harrison leaves it for Flash. Battalion control the puck. Looking for McClement through the middle. It gets away from him. Tillian plays it off the glass. And Harrison retreats to pick it up. Bounced off the boards. Only two shots on goal in that power play opportunity for the battalion. Junkins will touch this and bring it all the way back as the power play is over and done with. And the faceoff will be deep inside the battalion end. Yeah, you say the battalion only got two shots on that power play, Dougie, but definitely a uh, step in the right direction as far as... Uh, Looking back at their first power play chance in this game, and the battalion, despite the fact still being outshot 10 to 5, it seems like with that power play advantage, the battalion have kind of started to slow London down a little bit, and we'll have to see if they can do that over the next couple of minutes, because before that power play chance, London was really dominating the play. Bateman can control it off the faceoff. Comes back to Junkins at the point. Plays it around the near boards. Lobb has it. Outlet pass. Some skating room for Van Lusen. Across the center ice area. Van Lusen going wide. Weidman trying to take him out of the play. And takes the puck. Bateman hammers him in the corner. This is Torres to the front of the net. Loose puck. Bateman can control it as his stick is knocked away. And it's cleared the length of the ice by Nash. This is Paul Flash now with the puck. Across center, Flash looking for Bateman, gets by him. Molnar forced to touch that one as Bateman was right on top. This is Torres cutting out in front. His shot, it goes off the side of the net. Harrison can't keep it in. Here's a break for the puck. Harrison. And Bois go after it. Boy, Danny Bois with a great burst of speed through the neutral zone. Bateman retreats to pick it up. 
Goes cross ice. Torres can't control it. And it's cleared back into Brampton's corner. This is Harrison with it now. Davies watching him. Harrison chips it ahead. Pavel can't catch up to it. And Flash steps across center and dumps it into the corner. Bateman heads to the bench. McSwain hops the boards. Sellian with the puck. Off the near glass. Davies knocks it down. Klesla can't keep it in. Rowan for Havel. Havel makes the move, then runs over. Turner at the blue line. Rusty Klesla now inside his own zone. We'll leave it for Jason Maleko. Eight minutes to go here in the first period. We're all tied at one. Maleko gathers it through his own zone. Havel will leave it for Rowan across the blue line. Rowan back for Havel to the outside. Still can't control it. Havel has it. Tries to get it back to Klesla at the point. And McSwain pokes at it. Klesla takes a swipe at it. Nash gets it across the blue line. Tries to pin McSwain on the boards. Rowan comes away with the puck. Rowan looking for Havel in front. Can't feed him the pass. Havel back for Klesla across the blue line. And Nash watches him closely. McSwain dumps it in the corner and heads to the bench. London changes on the fly as well. Burnham and Hunter hop the boards. Comes to Hunter on the near side. Flash bounces it back into the corner. LaRue after this. Sellian leaves it in the corner. And it's picked up by Turner. Ian Turner inside his own zone. Gets it across the center ice area. Chipped across the blue line. And Brampton will clear it. Thompson for Clayton. Clayton gets it back to Flash. With time, Flash goes cross ice for LaRue, who plays it to the corner. Thompson's got Clayton heading to the front of the net. Gets it back. There's a wrist shot, a weak one. Mulner with no problem to kick that aside. LaRue has it for Thompson. Looking for Clayton in front. Bounces it back off the boards, and London will control. Held gets bumped off the puck, but Hunter comes away with it and dumps it through the neutral zone. Harrison has to retreat to pick it up. Touches it and waves it down with 6.26 to go in the first period. We've seen Lindsey Hofford's London Knights do a good job to neutralize Rusty Klesa. When you look back at things now, we saw him hauled down earlier just trying to move the puck out of his own zone. We saw him neutralized on the power play. Just a couple of minutes ago, we saw Rick Nash get out on him in a real hurry and eliminate that pocket of time that you usually see Rusty Klesla get to operate. And if the London Knights are able to keep, to keep doing that, they're really going to eliminate Klesla's effectiveness. You know, we talked about the keys to victory here tonight. And for London, really, the keys to victory are, 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 are quite simple. And that's take care of the big three that Brampton has to offer, and that being Torres, Klesla, and Havel. Those three guys are three guys that can run and run at will. And those three guys can sneak in and score at any given time. Comes back to the point. Maleko's shot is blocked. Nash picks up the loose puck. Swooping down the far side. Nash across the blue line. Klesla bumps him to the outside. Nash still has it. Tries to stuff it in the near side. And it goes awry. Loose puck is cleared. Picked up. This is Bateman. Bateman tries to get it back for Klesla. Klesla has it in the corner now. Rusty sidestepping the check. Still has the puck. Klesla for Torres. Torres steps into the play. Klesla moves back to the blue line. 5.55 to go in the first period. Wah gets bumped from behind by Maleko and sends it the length of the ice as Torres retreats to pick it up. This is Rusty Klesla inside his own zone. Centering pass for Torres through the middle, goes the length of the ice. Molnar will take it and play it off the boards. Van Leusen in the corner for Torres. Centers it out in front, looking for Bateman going through the slot area. Held can't control it. This is Davies now across the blue line. Davies heads into Brampton's end to the outside. Flash hauls him down. No penalty called on the play. And Bateman will play it around behind his own net. Henrik is there to bounce it off the glass and chip it through the neutral zone. Eminger has it at center ice. Steps across center and tries to make the good cross ice pass, but it was Jay Harrison there to pick it off. Mulner plays it around the boards for Hunter. Gets past him. Flash dumps it in the corner. Bonus got a man in front. Looks for Henrik in front. Can't get him the pass. Held. Trying to take Henrik out of the play. 
Burnham has it. Goes for Hunter through the middle. Off his stick. Flash still has the puck, and he'll play it back inside of London's end. Harrison heads to the bench. Maleko hops the boards. McClement picks off that one and dumps it back across the blue line. Hunter through center ice. Has it poked away from him by Paul Flash. McClement takes the hit from behind, and Flash plays it in the corner. And we've got offside called here in the Brampton Center. The shots on goal have narrowed to 10-8 in favor of London. The Knights have yet to get a shot on goal since that last power play opportunity of the battalion. Yeah, well, like we talked about, we knew that the Brampton Battalion had to slow down the London Knights. And, of course, since that power play opportunity, like we talked about, the battalion have done that. They've slowed down the London Knights. And we have seen the shots on goal. The shots on goal have evened out here over the last couple of minutes as we now begin to push towards the end of this first period with only 4.21 remaining in a 1-1 hockey game. Last couple of times we saw the battalion successful in the Brampton Centre. They were putting 20 and 25 shots on goal in any given period, and that is what makes the battalion successful. Shoot the puck and shoot the puck often and look for rebounds. Glassla plays it around the boards. Chamber steps into the play. Hobble gets a piece of him. Nash swoops in, picks up the loose puck. He's got Lob in front. Can't get the puck in front. Lob goes after it in the corner. Rowan, he'll dump it towards center ice. Bouncing puck. Very tough, but Stathopoulos does a great job to get it to Nash. Nash goes down. Rowan got a piece of him. Rowan's got Hobble with him. Rowan, he's hauled from behind. No penalty called on the play. Maleko steps up, gets a piece of his man, and Nash comes away with the puck. This is Kurt McSwain back the other way, and we've got a penalty going against the battalion. Looks like it could be Rusty Klesla going off. So the first round draft choice of the Columbus Blue Jackets heads to the box, and we'll see the London power play for the first time this evening. So tripping will be the call against Rusty Klesla, and so far through this first period, it looks like, in my mind, Ricky Nash has been the most dangerous player on the ice for either team. He's had chances, shorthanded and even strength, of course, scoring shorthanded. And also, he's a guy, of course, a Brampton native. He's going to have a little bit of an extra hop in his step playing tonight in his hometown. And you get to see him likely be out on the power play, although he was out there on the end of a long shift. But I'm sure he'll be out there shortly. What a great opportunity for the Knights as they've been a little bit lackadaisical in the last five or six minutes of play, and we see the shots on goal tightening up. And what a great opportunity to go in the dressing room with a one-goal lead with just 3.33 to go here in the first period and a two-minute power play. McSwain plays it inside his own zone. Harrison touches this one. Held has it. Tries to get it back to the point. McSwain bouncing with his man. Loose puck caught, and Kurt McSwain skates and finally clears it across the blue line. Weidman back to pick it up for the Knights. Gets the long outlet pass. It's tipped towards center and flashes there to bounce it off a of body and back into London's end where Weidman will try it again. Hemsky across for Hunter through the neutral zone. Hunter tries to get it to Held. Held still has it. Back for Hemsky. Shot is blocked. Partially blocked by Thompson. Scott Thompson and Jay McClement up front, and a two-on-one break. McClement and Thompson with Weidman back. McClement looking for Thompson, can't get him the pass. Loose puck. Brampton picks it up. McClement with the shot, it goes wide. So almost a little tit for tat as Brampton with a great opportunity. Mulner comes up big. Maleko with some room to roam. He steps up and dumps it in the corner. 50 seconds remain in the Knights' power play. 2.20 to go here in the first period. Stathopoulos with the puck. Leaves it for Turner across center ice. Turner with some room as he gets across the Brampton blue line. Shot right on. Finley makes the save. Then a pile up ensues as Sherman takes the bulk of that one from Rafi Torres. And we see a little pushing and shoving now here after the whistle as Jeff Bateman gets in as well. But talk about shorthanded opportunities. The Knights cashing in on one of those earlier on in the period. And down there you saw Jay McClement have a great chance. Got, uh, got the rebound on the shot. Came around behind the net. Caught up with a rolling puck and didn't really maybe realize he had a lot of time even when he came around from behind the net. Yeah, it was almost like a parting of the Red Sea from the defenseman for Ian Turner as he stepped across center. All of a sudden, he looked up and he had room to roam. He was he had a great opportunity in front of Finley and let a nice wrist shot go. Brian Finley up to the task. 
So end-to-end -end action here in the Brampton Center. Sherbert and McSwain move into the face-off circle. McSwain wins this one. London controls Nash from the blue line. His shot goes off a skate. Cleared back off the glass. That'll hop into the bench area and another stoppage in play. So we're inside of two minutes to go here now in the first period. Still 25 seconds remaining in the penalty to Rusty Klusla. And the battalion have done a fantastic job here killing off this penalty so far. As Brian Finley has been big. The shot still just sitting at 11-9 now in favor of the London Knights as things continue to even out a little bit more. As the face-off will come to Mr. Finley's left here deep in the Brampton zone. Stathopoulos off the draw, can't control it, goes in the corner, flash, plays it to the blue line. Turner can't keep it in. Turner twists away from McClement, still has the puck. Good pass for Joel Sherman. Turner tries to stay onside, but they'll wave this one down. So 13 seconds remain in the penalty to Rusty Klesla. Buck 46 in this first period of play. Well, McClement's done it all here on this shorthanded situation, even pushed the... Uh... Knights player offside there at the blue line, getting the whistle and the draw will come outside the line now. McClement with the chance shorthanded earlier and uh, running a little interference there that he got away with at the blue line. Held gets it across the blue line. Loose puck, Brampton will clear it. McSwain has it on the break. Here's Kirk McSwain, hold from behind as Weidman picks the puck up and he'll go to the box. I don't know if that's a penalty shot or not, but that was a clear break. McSwain a step behind Weidman, so a good job by Weidman really to break up a breakaway opportunity as the seconds wind down here in the first period of play. Yeah, I think maybe if, uh, I guess it was Van Leusen was able to get that extra step, then maybe, maybe he, uh, you could have called a penalty shot there, but Weidman got the stick on him in a hurry, and uh, good call there by the referee just to give him a hooking penalty, I think. So Klesla steps back on the ice in just two seconds, and we'll see a Brampton opportunity for the final minute and 30 seconds here of the first period. Played into the corner, Van Leusen steps up. Wah can't get it away from him. Van Leusen looking for Bateman. Bateman deep into the corner for Torres. Torres cycles it down up for Klesla, deep in front. Bateman got a piece of that one and deflected it wide. Bateman leaves it for Aaron Van Leusen. Van Leusen follows up to the top of the circle, back for Bateman, looking for Torres in front, floats a pass, Van Leusen shot, it's deflected, loose puck in front, Bateman with a couple of nifty moves in front of Molnar who got a piece of that one. Sherbin will clear it to the blue line, Klesla does a good job to cover up and keep it in. Maleko being hounded by Bois, comes back to Klesla. With time, Rusty plays it for Maleko, back for Klesla. Cotton escapes but gives it to Rafi Torres. 40 seconds remain in the first period. Bateman to Torres. There's the shot. It goes off Turner in front. Cleared to the blue line and out as Maleko couldn't keep it in. 25 seconds left. Torres back for Klesla. Klesla's shot deflects off Turner and goes just wide. Havel can't keep it in. Comes back to Lucas Havel. Back to the point. Maleko back for Havel. Steps out in front. Leaves it for Torres. His shot hits the side of the net. 10 seconds remaining. Finally cleared by Turner and gets it to the blue line. Klesla keeps it in. Five seconds. Havel trying to get it out in front as time winds down. Scores! Rafi Torres as time expires. Putting the battalion up by a goal. Just shy of the final buzzer here in the first period. We see the battalion start to use their speed and start to use some great puck movement as well. And that's what opened things up down there. And Lucas Hobble just waited and waited. And I don't know if anybody thought he was going to make that pass out in front of the net before the first period ended. But Rafi Torres, a few great chances on that power play. And Torres able to cash in with a great, quick snapshot from right in front of Aaron Molnar. And they haven't put the goal on the board yet.
Now they have. And the goal is on the board. Rafi Torres will get credit for the goal. I don't think there was any doubt about that one. It did, in fact, appear as though, uh, I mean, when I looked up at the clock after the puck went in the net, there was a few minor, minor ticks left on the clock, but... Uh, and there still are a few ticks left on the clock to finish off this first period of play. So it'll probably drop the puck for a quick face-off because it's percentage of seconds left. So we're going to have to uh, check and see if they are just going to make this a formality here and drop the puck since... I guess technically there must be some time left on the clock. <laughs> However many tenths or hundredths of a second it is. It's very tough to put hundreds of tenths of a second back on the clock, but they will make it a formality. Go out. Leslin Havel picking up assists on Rafi Torres' goal, and a big goal it was to finish off. Well, what a heartbreaker, Hammer, going into the dressing room. What could have been a 1-1 tie with the dying seconds, and now it's a 2-1. You're down by a goal. And boy, what a lift for the battalion going in the room right now. But you can see that starting to happen there on that power play advantage. The battalion started to move the puck with a lot of confidence. And once Hovel was left all alone in front, the Knights looked to be doing a good job to tie up anything in front of the net. They knew Hovel had to move it in front of the net. There wasn't enough time to go back to the point as the clock was running down. And... Well, the one guy that you don't want to leave untouched is Rafi Torres in front of the net, so. The quick hand release could have been the difference as Rafi Torres rifled one pass. Aaron Molnar, a 2-1 battalion lead, and this formality of finishing off the second period. As we wait for a couple of ticks left on the clock, I think they're going to put a second or two on the clock. Yeah, I guess what they'd have to do is just put one second on the clock, and now they've... Uh... Oh, it looks like they are having a number of difficulties here with the clock now. They moved it now to the third period. <laughs> it's literally going to be the puck hitting the ice and the whistle and the uh, buzzer going here. I don't know why they really need to put anything on that, the clock I to was, do this. I was just <laughs> thinking the same thing. Why do you really need to put anything on the clock if we're talking about dropping the puck on the ice and kicking off and heading to the dressing room? But it is a formality and something that in hockey needs to be played out. So they can put five seconds back on the clock. Believe it or not, time enough for a shot on goal. Now, I don't know if this is five tenths or five one hundredths of a second here. I don't know what it would be. Or is this five seconds? There they go. They're going to leave two seconds, now four seconds. <laughs> okay, they're counting the wrong <laughs> <Yeah>. way. <laughs> Again, we've talked about it as a formality, and that's exactly what it is. As time expires here well, now, for the first period of play, and the battalion will go in the dressing room up by a goal. 11-10 the shots on goal after one period of play. Hammer, some final thoughts on this first period. Well, the battalion did not. They got off to a great start by scoring early, but they gave up a shorthanded goal moments later, and the shots on goal... Uh, we're grossly favoring the London Knights, but things tended, tended to even out there in that first period, and Rafi Torres scoring the goal, a great, great lift for the battalion going into the room here. We'll come back with the second period of play and our first intermission with Scott Van Slyke. Stay with us on OHL Prime Time. We're coming back on, with more on Rogers Sports. Welcome back to the OHL on Rogers, and we're coming to you live from the Brampton Center, where the Brampton Battalion currently lead the London Knights 2-1. Standing by with me now is third-year battalion center Jeff Bateman, and uh, Jeff, thank you for joining us this evening. No, no problem. All right. And uh, Jeff, uh, you tallied five points in your last three games. Uh, seems like you haven't missed a beat since coming back from suspension. You've just played uh, awesome. What's, uh, what's been your secret so far, Jeff? Uh, over those three weeks, you know, I just uh, gave me time to regroup and, and think it over, like think season over so far. I came back with a good attitude. I didn't want to change my game at all. You know, I took the suspension and uh, just want to come back and still work hard. And uh, Jeff, was it coming back? Uh, you know, coming back was it tough getting your timing back? I mean, you spent almost uh, you know two weeks off the ice, and uh, it's one thing to practice and keep your conditioning level up, but uh, is it kind of hard getting the hand speed and the timing back, Jeff? 
Exactly. Especially when you're playing with guys like Van Luzen and Torres, you know, they're always at full tempo. And I came back after my layoff, and it, I felt a step behind, but it didn't take me long to get back in the groove of things. So uh, it looks like you're right back in the groove tonight, Jeff. And uh, you, uh, you guys tied Erie 3-3 uh, last Saturday, a uh, big point against the division rival, and uh, you get to enjoy another uh, meeting down with them in Pennsylvania on, uh, on Friday night. Uh, some of your thoughts on that uh, upcoming matchup, Jeff? Uh, anytime we play Erie, you know, we play like a playoff game and we want to win those games and they're one of the best teams in the league and if you can't get up for those games, you know, you shouldn't be on this team wearing this jersey. So we take every game we play against them to heart. Right on. And uh, Jeff, there's uh, roughly eight games left in the season. Uh, you got a tough battle right now going on with Windsor and uh, you still have a chance to catch Guelph, who's uh, third place overall. And uh, some of your thoughts on the playoff battle and how tight it's coming down here in the last couple weeks of the season, Jeff? It's really tight, actually, through the standings right now. And uh, every game we want to play, we want to put three periods together and work hard and we want to play for home ice advantage. So that's what we're doing right now. Uh, it seems like some of these uh, smaller or teams uh, that are a little bit lower down in the standings, Jeff, they play you so tough here. I mean, uh, North Bay played you tough here a couple weeks ago, and uh, Lennon tonight. It just uh, seems like there's no escaping. There's no uh, weak holes in your uh, in your uh, in your game so far. Oh, any game we play, you know, it's playoff mentality this time of the season. And uh, any team lower than us in the standings are fighting for playoff spots, and any team higher than us, we're trying to catch. So every game we go in, we got to go in and work hard. And uh, except Jeff, you were drafted by the Dallas Stars in uh, 1999. And uh, do you have any discussion with them uh, so far this season on your play or uh, whatnot? Uh, maybe discussing, uh, you know, Jeff, any improvements in your game? Uh, any thoughts on that, Jeff? Yeah, they've been uh, talking through my agent. My agent contacted me. They just want me to go keep working hard and uh, develop my defensive play and uh, still chip in with a few goals here and there. Right and uh, some of your uh, thoughts so far in uh, tonight's game with Lennon, Jeff. Uh, except you got an early 2-1 lead on them. And uh, what do you guys got to do to keep it up in the second? We just got to uh, limit their offensive chances and uh, work hard defensively, and then our goals will come. Right on, Jeff. Thanks very much for joining us. And we'll be right back in just a few moments here from the Brampton Center. Center for Sports and Entertainment with the Brampton Battalion currently lead the London Knights 1 0. Standing by, standing by with me rather right now is London goaltender Aaron Molnar. And uh, Aaron, uh, you're doing just something uh, fantastic this season. I'm, I'm sure if many people know about it, you've played every game, 59 games thus far for the London Knights, and you're on pace to play every game this season in, uh, in net for the Knights. Uh, just a fantastic accomplishment. And uh, I don't know if you're a fan of uh, Cal Ripken Jr., Aaron, but uh, how did all this come about, uh, the streak? Well, I mean, I knew at the beginning of the season that I was going to be playing a lot. Uh, you know, they, they put a lot of faith in my game, and, uh, you know, I, I, for, fortunately, I've risen to the occasion and played well this year. I certainly have. And, uh, Aaron, how do you prepare mentally for each game? I mean, uh, you faced uh, over 2,000 shots so far this season, been in net for over 3,200 minutes, just a uh, fantastic uh, durability on your part, but uh, how do you go in preparing mentally each game knowing you're going to face that many shots and you're going to get all the workload? Well, I mean, you just have to go in and be focused on the game, not worry about, you know, if you're hurt or you know, what's going on around you. You just go out and play hard every game and, you know, hopefully things go well for you. Fantastic. And uh, like I said, you start, the last time uh, a goalie started this, uh, did this, what you're doing, was in 62 and 63, Aaron, a long time ago. Uh, George Gardner did it for the Niagara Falls Flyers. And uh, do you get a sense of the history you're making uh, this year, Aaron, uh, playing in the 68 game OHL season this year? Well, I mean, obviously it's an honor to get the opportunity to play all these games. I mean, there's a lot of good goalies in this league. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I'm thankful every time I get to go out into the net because that's where I want to be. You want to be a number one goalie. You want to go out and play every game, and they've given me the opportunity here to do that, and, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate for it. And uh, most coaches might have set their goaltender out by now, and uh, how have you been able to uh, persuade Coach Hoffer to keep you in? Uh, you know, every goalie, every player, every team goes through their bad and good stretches. Aaron, uh, how have you managed to uh, kind of uh, bend his ear a little bit to keep you, uh, keep you in between the pipes? Well, I mean... You just go out and play hard every game. He knows that, uh, you know, I'm going to be there for the team. The team knows I'm going to be there for them. So, I mean, it's just a matter of going out and playing every night. It's, uh, you know, if you have a bad game, you know that you're going to be right back in there helping the team out the next night. It's a good feeling to, to have. Thanks very much. And uh, Aaron, really quickly, uh, you guys are coming down to crunch time. Uh, you're battling for the last playoff spot in the OHL, right behind Kitchener, three points behind. Some of your thoughts on the rest of the season really quickly. Well, I mean, obviously, it's a big stretch of games for us. Uh, I think we've got the team to make the playoffs. We just have to go out and play hard for 60 minutes each night. If we do that, we're going to be successful. 
If we don't, then we'll fall short. But you know what? I think we've got the team to do it, and uh, we just have to go out and play hard, and we will. And there's certainly nobody that's doing more of their part for the London Knights than Aaron Molnar. Aaron, thank you very much for joining us. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. And that's it. We'll be back for the Brandon Center in just a few moments. Stick with us. Welcome back to the Brampton Center for Sports and Entertainment. Right now, we're going to throw it upstairs to Doug Anderson and Mike Hancock for some of their thoughts on the first period action. Thanks, Scott Hammer. You know, that first period of play was a strange first period indeed. If you are a Battalion fan, came out big to start and finished off the period strong. But that middle 10 minutes or so, really, the London Knights were outstanding. Yeah, it's a tough period to really uh, sum up in a hurry because the Brampton Battalion, like we said, got off to that quick start. Uh, London strikes back shorthanded, and then, I mean, right at, you know, literally the very last second, Brampton goes up 2-1. to one. And, yeah, like you said, for that middle 10 minutes of the first period, London absolutely dominated, but it was after, after Brampton was able to kill off a penalty that they were able to kind of get things back together and really slow the Knights down. And the battalion were able to take control of the play, start to move the puck around a little bit better, skate, make some room for themselves. And uh, following that, I mean, Battalion, of course, strike at the end of that first period to go up 2-1. to one. You know, a couple of guys that really did impress me in that period, one of them from the Brampton Battalion had to make Chris Rowan. Boy, Rowan was flying in that first period from start to finish, and that's what Chris Rowan's going to have to do to be successful in this hockey game. Yeah, and I think when you look back at things, I think this is what Stan Butler probably expected from Chris Rowan in year two as a member of the Brampton Battalion. Of course, Rowan's a kid who was originally thinking scholarship, then got drafted to the O, came through the ranks, and he's really established himself as a real physical presence. Yeah. He's got a lot of speed, and when this kid goes, he can put the puck in the net, and that's what he did at the start of the first period. Interesting as well to watch Rick Nash. Boy, does he have a burst of speed, and he can turn on the Jets at any given time, and very dangerous with the puck. He did a little dipsy doodle two or three times. They really had the Brampton defenders inside out. Well, not to say that this isn't something that Rick Nash does every night, but playing in his hometown tonight, like we mentioned in the first period, he's got that extra little hop yeah. in his step tonight, and still, despite the fact Rafi Torres scores at the end of that first period and had a great first period, still think Rick Nash was is the most dangerous player on the ice in the first period. You know, first time we've seen Brian Finley on OHL primetime, and boy, he came up big a number of times. Yeah, we saw the shots on goal were heavily in favor of London in the first half of that first period. They now set at 11-10 after the first period, heading into the second here now, and Finley slamming the door, really, it was, you know, maybe the key we can look back at was the first 15 seconds of the game when Finley slammed the door on London twice. And, I mean, from there, Finley pretty much calmed down. You, I mean, you take away Nash's shorthanded goal, and Finley's been obviously spotless here. In the well, first. we're going to come back with the start of the second period. Let's go back down to Scott Van Slyke at ringside. And thank you, Doug, and thank you, Mike. And right now, we're going to go to take a break, and more second period action coming right up from the Brampton Center for Sports and Entertainment. Stay tuned. We kick off this second period here. Uh, McSwayton takes the faceoff. Turner picks it up off the faceoff. A 2-1 battalion lead. Watt clears it into the corner. Sherman after it. Plays it. And around the near side. Davies can't control it. McSwain going down. Davies going to the box. And we'll see the Brampton power play to kick off this second period of play. And it's almost a good thing that he got a step on McSwain there because McSwain almost uh, took a retaliatory penalty there as he took a swipe. As he took a swipe at his man there, Jason Davies. There you go. Took a swipe at Jason Davies as he was skating away after he hauled down McSwain in the corner. So the battalion, uh, hey, more good news for them. They go on the power play here just 20 seconds in and the London Knights have to be kind of 
shaking their heads right now. They got bitten there at the end of the first period, and now the battalion will have a chance to put a little bit more heat on the London Knights here to start off this second period. Yeah, how big is it when you can finish off a period of play with a goal and start the next period on the power play? Huge opportunity for the Brampton Battalion. Cleared inside the battalion in. Maleko has the puck. Gathers it up, he's got time. Feeds Torres on the breakout. Torres tries to tip it by the defender. Blas there to clear it back to the blue line. Van Luzen takes the bump. Leaves it for Torres, who turns inside his own zone. Rafi leaves it behind the net for Maleko. Jason Maleko. Outlet pass for Torres through the middle. Hounded from behind. Good job by Nash. Cleared back into Brampton's end. This is Maleko for Klesla. Back for Maleko. 1.15 remaining in this power play opportunity for London. Torres goes cross ice. Klesla can't control it. And a two-on-one the other way with Stathopoulos and Nash. And they'll take that as it's tipped above the shoulders and waved down at the blue line. Nash looked like he did a great job to knock that puck down. Took a couple seconds to call it, but right now the London Knights are doing a great job to bottle up the Brampton breakout here so far on this man advantage for Brampton. 49 seconds into it, and Brampton so far not too much to show for it. So the battalion will change things up a little bit up front as Jay McClellan will step in along with Lucas Havel and Kurt McSwain up front. McClement wins this off the faceoff. It's Klesla trying to poke it ahead. Nash is there to clear it back inside of the Brampton end. Finley will leave it for Maleko. They'll try the breakout one more time with a minute gone in this power play. This is Klesla through center to McSwain. Kurt McSwain across the blue line. McClement heads to the front of the net. Jay McClement has the puck. Back to Maleko at the blue line. He tries to look in front. McSwain trying to cause some traffic. Klesla, or to uh, Hobble, rather, at the side. And Eminger will clear it, and they get it across the blue line. Half Havel was able to corral that pass, and one time it, we could have seen a Brampton power play goal there. Jason Maleko gathers it up inside his own zone, tipped ahead by McSwain at the blue line. Bouncing puck, McSwain follows it up. McClement gets it caught up in his skates. McSwain behind the net for Havel. Havel to the point for Maleko. Klesla lets it fly, blocked in front. Cleared the length of the ice. No, it's back to the center ice area as Klesla's there. McSwain touches it offside as he heads to the bench with eight seconds left in the power play opportunity. Well, that's the first time so far in any one of Brampton's power play opportunities that they've really been able to utilize Rusty Klesla. And we've seen all season long, all their success on the power play has really run through Rostislav Klesla. And with just eight seconds to go, it doesn't look like the Brampton Battalion will have success on this man advantage as the London Knights do a good job to slow down the battalion power play this time around. Held tied up at the Brampton blue line. Comes back to Turner. Turns and plays it off the glass. Harrison gathers it up and has time inside his own zone. Overskates the puck and then gives it away. Comes back to Turner at the blue line looking for Held in the corner. Flash plays it out for Torres, has it taken away. Bois, nifty pass out in front. Finley stones Davies in front. Clearing past the battalion, get it across the blue line. Bateman takes his man down. No penalty called on the play with 17-10 to go. Comes back to Harrison. He plays it for Flash. Brampton a little lackadaisical inside their own zone as Torres has it now. Torres back for Van Lusen, looking in front for Bateman. He ties up some traffic, goes down with Turner, and the play continues on to the blue line. Held looking for Davies. It gets by him and in the corner. Flash touches it. Icing's called, and they'll bring it all the way back inside of London's end. Hey, you talked about Brampton being a little bit sloppy in their own end there. That pass that kind of went into the skates, really, of Rafi Torres. Flash and Torres, there just wasn't a lot of real estate between the two. When that pass came quickly into the skates of Rafi Torres, that forced the turnover and really gave London their best scoring chance so far early on in this second period as they are now out shooting Brampton by a count of 12 to 10.
Chambers has it behind his own net. Chambers looking out in front. McSwain stole the puck away and centered it out in front. Harrison takes the bump, keeps the pass in. McSwain looking for Hovel. He gets bumped off stride. Comes to Hovel in the corner. Tries to get away from Stathopoulos. Hovel still has it. Chambers bumping him. Sorry, that was Junkins taking him out in the corner. Hovel then runs him into the far corner. London will try it again with Chambers in the corner. Plays it along the boards. Lob gets taken out from behind by Harrison. And here comes Nash cutting through the middle. Flash does a good job to take Nash out of the play while Finley steers the puck aside. Hobble behind the net for Harrison. Harrison for Rowan. Rowan along the near side. Tries to get it out through the middle. Does to Flash. Flash across center to McSwain. McSwain steps back to Flash. Tries to feed Hobble at the corner of the net. Pile up ensues behind London's end. 15.54 to go as this one's flagged down. Well, we've seen Rick Nash really do it all so far tonight for the London Knights. Also, throwing his body around quite a bit down there in the Brampton end, and then really uh, he was one of the main components in that tie-up down there behind the London net there at the end of that play. Interesting to watch how the London Knights' uh, Lindsey Hofford has made sure that his team changes and he's trying to match up lines. So you'll see the London forwards head to the bench three seconds into a shift. And that is to keep up with the Brampton forwards because Brampton, of course, at home is allowed to make the last change. Thompson bumped in the corner. Junkins has the puck. Plays it around, kept in by LaRue. Centering pass out in front looking for McClement. Finally bounced toward the blue line. Burnham can't get it across the blue line as Maleko keeps it in. McClement after Junkins. Played to the far side. Hunter gets it to the blue line. Parent keeps it in. He drives the shot high and wide. LaRue is there to pick it up. Looking for McClement. Back for LaRue. Still has the puck. Trying to feed McClement. It comes to the blue line and a two-on-one break. Hunter's got the puck. Looking for Burnham and it goes awry. Maleko can control it. Jason Maleko still with it. Breaks out of his own zone. Maleko steps to center and dumps it the length of the ice. We're going to get an icing call as Maleko was one step behind the center ice area when he let that fly. We had a little pushing and shoving here now after the whistle as Maleko, yeah, I think he was just trying to maybe take a little bit off of that and draw to the button down there in the face-off circle. Definitely didn't want to send it in for the icing call. Just 5.02 here to go, or into the second period, excuse me, and the faceoff will come all the way back down into the Brampton end to the right of Brian Finley. Fresh troops hopping the boards for the battalion. We'll see the line of Van Lusen, Torres, and Bateman up front. Tathopoulos, Nash up front for the Knights. Joining them will be Lobb as well with Weidman and Eminger on the point. Flash. And Harrison manning the points for the Brampton Battalion. 12-10, the shots on goal. Five minutes into the second period. Harrison has the puck. And there you see the quick change again by the Knights. As they send out the line of Sherbin, Bois, and Davies. Sherbin plays it in the corner. Trying to get it away. Loose puck to the side of the net. Bois looking for a man in front. Davies takes the hit from Bateman. Bois still can't control it. And coming away with it, Van Lusen. Sherbin tries to give it away. Sherbin has it at the side again. Harrison ties him up. Bouncing puck. Bateman gets away from his man. Looks for Van Lusen. Aaron Van Lusen with some skating room. Plays it behind the net for... Harrison who plays the Torres along the near side and we've got a two-line pass called. So again the quick change from the Knights as they send out the Sherbin line to compete with Rafi Torres line. Hey look at the London Knights are a very hungry team. They may sit in ninth place right now in the West Coast. There's three points behind the Kitchen Rangers with a game in hand right now, but the Knights hot on the tails of the Rangers. But of course, the Brampton Battalion 
tied right now with the Windsor Spitfires. They played one more game than the Spits. Tied in there with 66 points and just three points back of the Guelph Storm. But when you look at their schedules down the stretch, Brampton has five of their remaining eight games, including tonight's game, at home. Maleko steps up in the play, picks off the puck, looking for Klesla, goes off the stick of Hobble and played back into the Brampton end, but they're going to call this one between the blue line and the red line in the Brampton end of the ring. So we get a look there at Rusty Klesla, of course, a member of the World Junior Champion Czech Republic squad this year, along with his battalion teammate Lucas Havel over the Christmas break there and early into the 2001 calendar year. Lob and Rowan coming together off the face off. Stathopoulos leaves it for Nash. Steps across the blue line. Nash with the wrist shot. Fired it just over top of the net. I don't think Finley really got a good look at that one. Here's a loose puck. Three on one. Havel's got Rowan heading to the front of the net. Shot and he fires it just wide. Boy, Hobble brought that back in. Shot off the back foot. Trying to catch Molnar off stride. Stathopoulos has it poked away from him. Maleko does a good job to stand them up at the blue line. It's cleared back into London's end. Sullyan's back to pick it up. Watched by Hobble, who takes the puck away. Centers it out in front. There's the shot. It hits a body in front. McSwain with a great opportunity. Stathopoulos has it cut up in his jersey. Seen Lucas Havel, of course, increase his aggressiveness since coming back from the World Junior Championships. And he's been the instigator of a lot so far today for the Brampton Battalion. And they're putting some pressure on the defenseman, forcing him to cough up the puck and creating another scoring chance for the battalion in front of the London goal with 13-14 to go here in the second period. And Brampton's still leading it 2-1. I think Lucas has realized what it's going to take for him to move his game up to a next level. And he's certainly playing at that next level every time we've seen him here in the Brampton Center. Yeah, I think he certainly stepped up his game this year. I think definitely something that he wanted to work on in the offseason was just increasing his strength and physical play. And he's certainly done that. And since coming back from the World Junior Championships, he's just been an absolutely electric player. Back to the point. Parent with time. Rifles went way high over top of the glass. McMorrow tries to get it across deep inside the battalion end, but it's stopped up and Chambers loses it. Gives it away. McClement steps into the play. Backhand. Mulder makes the save. McClement still with the puck. Into the crease area and it's cleared. Held across center ice. Parent watching him. Brings it back in. Wrist shot right on. Cleared. Almost a giveaway from Henrik. Comes around the boards. Henrik has it. Outlet pass intended for Bonus. Goes off his stick. Bonus still has it. Bonus. He's got a man with him. Goes off the boot. And a good job by Chambers to break that up. Three on two back the other way now. Vardy clears it to the blue line and finally held. Bounces it in. We've got an offside call as both teams trying to change on the fly. Yeah, I think Branson kind of got caught by surprise, really, at the London blue line there. Ryan Bonus got some help from uh, linesman Sean McQuig, really, there to break up London's breakout out of their own end. And Branson had a three-on-two advantage at the London blue line, but nobody was moving, and they turned the puck over quickly. We have a look at Brian Finley, who has stopped 12 of 13 shots that he's faced so far tonight. Clayton after this one. Touched by Weidman. Icing is called. This is the fourth and final meeting of these two hockey clubs here in the Brampton Center. And of course they were involved in a one goal decision almost a week ago in London. And of course the battalion not such a great record in one goal games this year. Six wins, 13 losses in 19 one goal games this season but of course here tonight in Brampton they hold the one goal edge over the London Knights still leading at two to one here with 12 12 to go in the second period
Back to the point. Junkins with time. Let's it fly. Finley kicks that aside. LaRue has the puck. Plays it for Klesla. Outlet pass. Brampton will clear the zone. Long pass. Molnar leaves it there. Loose puck goes to the side of the net. What an effort by Jonah LaRue. I've seen both teams, their forwards, using their speed to put some pressure on really both teams' defense, but I think the Brampton Battalion have done a little bit better of a job to do that so far here today and use their speed to the outside to put some real pressure on the London defense. And we saw Lucas Havel really get down there in a hurry, and he forced the turnover just a couple of minutes ago. And there it was again with the Brampton forwards on the move and forcing Aaron Molder to cover up the puck and really face, force the faceoff to stay in the London end here. You know, Hammer, we talked earlier about the job that Brad Topping did between the pipes while Brian Finley came over from Barry and was on the shelf with the sore groin. Brad Topping actually set a battalion record, 16 consecutive games starting between the pipes. And of those 16 games, he was named goaltender of the month. Cleared the length of the ice and back to pick this up will be Klesla. He'll touch it and whistle it down for the icing call. 11.46 to go in the second period. You're watching OHL Primetime live on Roger Sports. Doug Anderson along with the hammer. Mike Hancock and Scott Van Slyke bringing you all the action on Roger Sports. Yeah, when you talk about the job Brad Topping did between the pipes in the month of January, it was really, I mean, it turns out to be kind of a thankless job because regardless of how well he did, I mean, he had to know and the battalion knew that he'd be turning the job over to Brian Finley once he became healthy, regardless of really what he was able to do. And, I mean, he you know, did a better than average job. He was fantastic. He was the best goaltender in the OHL the month that he played. That's right. But admittedly as well, though, he knows he's got a lot to learn, and he knows one of the guys that he can't learn it from is Brian Finley, who's been around this game for quite a while. And, of course, those 16 consecutive starts, great experience for the rookie as well. Absolutely. Boy, shot right on his kick the side by Finley. Battalion look to clear the blue line. Torres gets it across, picked up by Klesla on the rush. Rusty Klesla's got Aaron Van Lusen with him. Klesla knocked to the ice by Eminger. Eminger with a good job to knock Klesla aside. Loose puck out in front. Muller at the save. They score! Rafi Torres! Brampton just putting some pressure on the London Knights again, and this time they get the puck out in front of the net. Couple of whacks at it, and Rafi Torres falling and just kind of slapping at it with the backhand. They able to slide it underneath of Aaron Molder. And now the Brampton Battalion have a two-goal bulge here on the London Knights as we approach the midway mark of the second period and the midway mark of the game. So the conversation going on with referee Pierce, Rafi Torres now moving in to find out what's going on. Mike Stathopoulos is there to give his two cents worth. Boy, Rafi's been around all of the action in front of the net. He's really making sure that Molnar doesn't come out of his net very far because that'll leave him with open sides, and Rafi's taking advantage of both of those. I'm sure Stathopoulos possibly questioning Pierce to see if there's any goaltender interference on that. There was. There were bodies flying all over the place before Torres put that puck in the net. Uh, both battalion and night bodies flying all over the place, but goal will stand. Torres second of the night, and that gives the battalion a 3-1 edge. Well, Klesla's going to get uh, credit for that goal. I'm sure we'll see that one change. They're going to give Torres the assist on that one. So under 11 minutes to go here in the second period. Battalion Bolt just now two. Turner plays it for Nash across his own blue line. Nash steps across center and dumps it in. We got a penalty going against the battalion as Finley touches the puck. And it's a tripping call. They'll bring this one deep inside the battalion end as Hobble is going off. I'm sure just what the doctor ordered right now for the London Knights. They trail three to one right now. And definitely what they want to get back in this game, a man advantage and a chance to draw back to within one goal here with 10.45 to go in the second period. And the Knights have not been electric so far here tonight on the power play, but I'm sure they'll be trying to turn things around here and put some pressure on the battalion to get back into this hockey game. 
Sathopoulos, Sherbin, and Lobb up front for the Knights on the power play. Nash moves back to the point to join Ian Turner. But Swain clears the blue line. Turner has to retreat and pick it up. He'll stop behind his own net, set up the breakout pattern. And here comes Stathopoulos, wheeling through his own zone. With room to room, Stathopoulos to the outside, and Nash will clear it as it gets poked away. And the battalion fire at the length of the ice again. That was Kurt McSwain. McSwain and Van Lusen head to the bench. McClement hops the boards with Scott Thompson. Pass through the middle. Nash from center. This will be icing as Klesla will touch this one, firing it around the near side, right on the 10-minute mark. And this one will go back inside of London's end. You know, that's just sloppy play, Hammer. Two more steps, and he's across center and, and, and negates the icing, but he couldn't wait. He just got the puck on his stick and let it go right away. Yeah, and I think having a look over that Lindsey Hofford, I think that's exactly what he's telling him right now is that, you know, just keep your head up and have a thought there before you move the puck. And that would have definitely avoided that icing call as now the faceoff here will come all the way back into the London end with 1.15 to go in the penalty to Lucas Havel. Halfway through this hockey game here in the Brampton Center. McClement and held in the faceoff circle. Held wins this one. And London controls. Weidman with the puck at his own blue line. Knocked astray as McClemmon takes the puck away and keeps it inside of London's end. Held will try it again. This time to Bois across center ice. And Thompson, he fans on that one but gets it around the boards. McClemmon tries to get it to the blue line and it's kept in. Nifty move by Held. Rashad, he scores! Ryan Held. Of course, we thought we saw things fall apart there when Thompson kind of fanned, fanned on that clearing attempt and held with one nifty move. Got himself a lot of real estate in the slot and was able to beat Finley all alone there down low below the blocker. As we see here now, as held cruises into the slot and rips that puck low along the blocker side, not too far off the ice to beat Finley. And now narrow the gap to just a goal once again at three to two. Lots of hockey to be played here in the Brampton Center. A one goal margin. The battalion having a few words with referee Pierce. Obviously the late change there by the London Knights will now be erased as it looks like Eminger and Weidman will have to head off. Burnham, Held, and Hunter now head to the bench and the quick change again. Battalion will come out of their own zone. This is Malenko to the open side. Parent plays it up and into the bench area. I mean, we saw it there. We saw Lindsey Hofford making that quick change again. Once the puck hits the ice, the Knights dump it in, allow themselves to make the change, and get the guys they want onto the ice. John Eminger, of course. Lindsey Hofford coached him a few years back with the Bramley Blues of the Provincial Junior A Hockey League. And they went all the way to the Royal Bank Cup not too long ago. Maleko inside his own zone. With time, Jason Maleko tries to play it through the middle. Bateman still has it. Bateman then gets it away. Comes back to Bateman. He can't get it past the blue line. Van Lusen steps up into the play. Leaves it for Bateman. He can control it. Bateman battles along the boards with Juan Sherman. Puck comes loose into the near corner. This is Rafi Torres now. Torres sidesteps a check. Still with the puck. Torres looking for an open man. Plays it in the corner. Torres then going down. Eminger and Torres coming together. Torres fighting off. Eminger's lost his stick. 
behind the net. Torres trying to center it out in front. Bateman circles through the slot area. Cleared to the blue line. Davies has the puck for London. Poked away from him and bounced through the middle. This is Rafi Torres at the London blue line. To Jeff Bateman, his wrist shot. A weak one, but just missed on the glove side. Klesla clears his own. Maleko steps to center and fires it in. It goes off a of boot. Hobbles there to touch it first. Maleko lucky. He was a step behind center ice on that clear in. Bateman tied up. Puck comes loose. Hobble has it. Bateman heads to the front of the net. Hobble gets it out in front. Torres being bounced from behind. We've seen this coming. Now Rafi is going with Eminger. And Eminger just turtles and goes to the ice. And we'll see Torres go into the box. These two were having a number of words throughout that shift. And we may have seen that coming. And Torres wanted a piece of him. And Eminger really didn't look like he wanted too much to do with him. Looks like it could be just a roughing call going against Rafi Torres. If that is the case, and it is two minutes up on the board, he is very lucky that he didn't pick up a five-minute major. Well, you always wonder about that. You know, what does it really take to constitute a fight? What does it take to constitute that five-minute major? Is it, you know, two willing combatants? Is it one guy throwing punches? It, it Usually it's when the gloves hit the ground. If the gloves hit the ice, that is enough for most referees to call it. But I'll tell you something, that one didn't last very long, and Rafi really only threw one punch. So a roughing call goes against the battalion. We'll see the Knights power play one more time. Under eight minutes to go here in the second period. A 3-2 battalion lead. Fired around the board, Sherman can't control it. Bounced up along the boards. Harrison loses it, back into the corner. Stathopoulos can't control it. Flash gets to it first for the battalion. Lob gets hammered by Harrison. Cleared down and across the blue line. McSwain will clear it the length of the ice, finishing off the job started by Paul Flash. This is Ian Turner inside his own zone. Turner has room to roam. We'll play it ahead for Nash. Stepping up into the play. Flash can't control it and does at his own blue line and plays it again down the ice. Molnar leaves it for Turner. McClement with an empty pickoff. McClement turns away from the check. Thompson out in front. Gets it caught up in his skates. Boy, Scott Thompson with a great opportunity. Lesla has it. He'll take away valuable seconds here in the power play, turning and firing it back to the center ice area. Nash knocks this down above the shoulders, and they'll whistle it down just outside, or just inside, rather, the London blue line. So Kleslo does something you see defensemen doing. I think more and more now is sliding back when they get that chance and killing a little bit more time, wasting and creating a little bit more real estate between himself and... The other team, and there we saw Rick Nash get called for the high stick. So 37 seconds remain in the penalty to Rafi Torres. 6.34 remains here in the second period. Comes back to the blue line. Maleko gives it to Klesla with time. He dumps it the length of the ice one more time. 25 seconds remaining in this London power play. Weidman goes cross ice for Nash. Nash across the blue line. And there's a hammer check as Nash goes flying. Jeff Bateman all over the ice. Sidesteps a check from Eminger and goes into the corner. Bateman on Molnar. Molnar plays it around for Eminger. Loose puck out in front. Van Leusen looking for Bateman as Held goes into the net and takes it off the moorings. Bateman and Burnham now come together with just three seconds remaining in the Torres penalty. And he knew somebody was going to have a couple of words with Jeff Bateman after that hit. The battalion have an overall killing penalty, uh, penalty killing effectiveness of 79.4%. That is 296 penalties, and they've given up just 61 goals in that time. 
Well, we've seen them give up one power play goal here tonight, but it looks like they're going to they're in fine position to kill off this London man advantage with just three seconds now remaining in the call to Rafi Torres as we see he's up and ready to step back onto the ice. And with Torres ready to get back in the ice, you see Joel Sherbin out there as well. Boy, Sherbin is real, a real steady hockey player for this Knights club, and that's why he wears the C on his jersey. Weidman with the puck off the faceoff. Clearing pass for McMorrow. Torres steps into him as he comes out of the box as the penalty is over. McSwain around the boards for Havel. Havel stops. He'll go back the other way. Havel with a little bit of room to Jay Harrison. Harrison for Torres along the boards. Trying to feed it to Havel through the middle. And Flash will play it through the neutral zone. Havel can't tip it past the defenseman. Torres bumps his men. A little bit of loosey-goosey play as it comes to McSwain. Kurt McSwain with some room. Watched by McMorrow. Plays it to the near side. Kept in by Eminger. Eminger along the board. Burnham tries to feed it away. McSwain with a break. Weidman after him. McSwain sidesteps the check. Great job by Weidman going down and cutting off the passing lane. Harrison keeps it in. Bouncing puck. Molnar tips that aside. Havel can't control it. Rowan in on the play. Sherman will play it up over top of the glass and relieves the pressure and gets us a stoppage of play with 4.51 to go here in the second period. Coming up in the second intermission here on OHL Primetime, we'll get, a, we'll get to have a chat with Kurt McSwain, who of course has been uh, one of the great battalion really over the three years here, one of the original battalion, and I believe also approaching the 100 point plateau in his battalion career, I believe had 97 points entering tonight's game. Something else we should mention, Jay McClement with a birthday coming up, I believe it's tomorrow. McClement turns 18 years of age, and boy, has this kid got a career ahead of him. Yeah, turn that magic 18. It's uh, time to even talk a little bit more about the NHL draft. Of course, one of the most highly touted North American prospects for this year's draft. Torres steps into the play. Lob gets it away. Stathopoulos can't control it. Bateman gives it back for Klesla. Klesla trying to feed it across for Torres, and it's cleared across the blue line. Malenko steps up. Nash gets a piece of him. Stathopoulos moves into the play, falls on the puck for the stoppage in play. <laughs> and Stathopoulos gets off the ice with 4.19 to go here in the second period. I'll tell you something. London seems to be needing a second chance to get the puck out of their own zone. If you have to take two or three opportunities to clear it, the battalion forwards will jump on every opportunity deep inside of the offensive zone. I don't know if we're catching this. Rafi Torres heading off, bumping in with John Eminger again. I think maybe Rafi wondering if Eminger's uh, dance card is full for the night or if he's got a little room for one more. Sherman, Bois, and Davies up front for the night. McSwain, LaRue, and Thompson up front for the battalion. Harrison tries to pinch up. Has the puck inside his own zone for Flash. Flash for McClement. Sherman takes it away from him. Gives it to Davies. Poked away from him at the blue line and bounced back toward the battalion blue line. Flash retreats. Boy, Paul Flash has played a steady defensive game tonight for Jonah LaRue, through the middle, looking for Thompson, deflected up and into the battalion bench. So with 3.55 to go, I'm sure the battalion will be trying to have the same kind of finish they did in the first period as they finished with a goal and a little bit more of a boost heading into the dressing room in the intermission as the London Knights have kind of Started to take a little bit of the play back here, but I say the battalion are still carrying the bulk of the play, although still being outshot 17 to 15. Things have been pretty even throughout this second period. Harrison off the face off. LaRue plays it along the boards. Harrison for flash through the middle. McClement can't control it. Junkins has it now for Chambers. Back for Junkins. 
inside his own zone. Watch closely. LaRue after him. Played to the center ice area. Held gets knocked off stride but gives it to Hunter. Loose puck looking for Thompson in front. And it's played back toward the blue line. And the battalion will clear the zone. Held then takes the puck away for London and plays it back into the Brampton end where Harrison retreats to pick it up. Sidestepping a falling Hunter. Comes back to the blue line and is chopped over the boards. Another stoppage in play. Well, McClement and Burnham coming together deep inside of London's end. Some few choice words from each player. Burnham looks like he could be going to the box. No, he's heading off to the bench. I was going to say, things seem to be getting a little bit chippier out here. Uh, I don't know if it's frustration on the part of the London Knights or frustration on the part of the Brampton Battalion and that the play seems to have slowed down a little bit more. There's a lot more uh, hitting going on, I'd say, in general. Maybe a, a little more, more clutching, clutching and grabbing. Grab, yeah. um, and I think maybe both teams are getting a little bit frustrated at the way each other is playing. And we're going to get to see maybe a little bit more feisty play in the third period. You know, this has been a strong game so far for the uh, trio of Rowan, McSwain, and Hobble who are on the ice right now. These guys have really come together and uh, really complement each other well. Stan Butler always maneuvering with the lines, making sure that he's getting the best nine combination. The best nine forwards playing together at any given time. Hobble steals the puck away. He's got McSwain. Hobble pulls it back. Reshot. Just missed on the glove side. Used McSwain as a decoy. This is Nash picking it up inside his own zone. Klesla watches him, but Maleko runs him out of real estate. Klesla picks up the loose puck. We got a penalty going against the battalion as Stathopoulos was hauled down behind the net with just 2.38 to go here in the second period. I believe it was Chris Rowan adding around behind the net. He'll get called for interference. And as the play was already moving up ice, definitely no reason to take that penalty behind your own net. Especially with just over two minutes to go in a period, that leaves your team shorthanded for the bulk of the remainder of the period, just 38 seconds after the penalty is over. And the faceoff inside your own zone. McSwain and Van Lusen up front. Klesla and Malenko manning the point. The line of Sherbin, Stathopoulos, and Lobb up front for the Knights. With Nash and Turner on the point. Goes back to Malenko, who lets it go the length of the ice. Muller will leave it there for Turner. Nash runs a little interference in front. The loose puck is cleared, and Klesla is there to bounce it back inside the zone. They're going to take this as an offside, delayed offside, as Turner went behind his own net. Yeah, we saw Rostislav Klesla make a great play there, really not uh, biting on Joel Sherbin at all. It was camped out inside the Brampton blue line. When he started to curl back, Klesla still didn't bite on Sherbin. And that enabled uh, Klesla really to grab control of the puck and send it back the other way in a hurry. Play cleared into the battalion end. Maleko retreats to pick it up. Fires it off the glass. It goes over top of the glass. So 128 remain in the London power play, and 128 remains in the penalty to the Brampton Battalion. I think Maleko may have try been trying to lobby that uh, went off maybe a Knights player now, but uh, the faceoff still regardless will come out outside the Brampton blue line here. It's just over two minutes remaining here in the second period, and Chris Rowan still off for another buck 28. Important face-off for the battalion as McSwain wins this one. Klesla steps up and fires it down the ice. Weidman at his own blue line. Cross-ice pass for Nash. Nash 
Shifting to the outside. Nash still has the puck. Wheels away. Nash gets it away for Eminger. Back in front. Bois can't control it. And the Battalion come back three on two. Klasla joins Van Lusen. He dumps it right in on net. Molnar has the puck. Eminger steers it in the corner. Eminger goes cross ice. Picked off by Rusty Klesla. He shoots it right on. Molnar steers that aside. Boy, Eminger gave it away inside his own zone. McClemon can control it. Held after him, cleared to the blue line. Weidman knocks it down, gets it for Eminger. Back for Weidman. McClemon right on him. Loose puck is blocked. Good job by Rusty Klesla. One minute to see Offside is called on the play. 57 seconds remaining here in the first period. What a play by Klasla in front of Brian Finley just to stand up and take that shot right in the gut and then clear the rebound. Yeah, the Knights were doing a good job of trying to get the open up things at the point and get a clear shot at the net, but the battalions really stacked the bodies up and nothing was getting through there. And that really created a chance the other way and then the play was blown down the high stick there at the London Blue Line. So Rowan's got 20 seconds left in the box. 57 seconds remain in the second period of play. Sherbin wins the draw. Eminger gets the puck. Eminger back for Sherbin on the near side for Weidman. Loose puck bounces away and the battalion will clear it back inside the zone and that should do it to Chris Rowan's penalty as he'll hit the ice in just two seconds. Eminger looking to get it out of his own zone as Rowan is back on the ice. Lob after this one. Tries to cut through the middle. It was Rowan there to cut him off at the pass. Just 25 seconds remain in the second period. Rowan gives it away. Sherman steps into one. Finley got a piece of that and steers it aside. Rowan again with a burst of speed. Well rested, cuts towards the middle. Rowan still has the puck, finally poked away from him. Harrison steps up, fires it in the corner, and we're down to five seconds to go here in the second period. Battalion should go in the dressing room. Up one goal and a 3-2 lead as Davies tries to get his way around Flash, and that does it for the second period of play as Davies took a swing at Flash as the second period came to a close and both linesmen step into that and break it up. Hammer some final thoughts here on the second period of play. Really, almost a carbon copy of the first period. Brampton comes out big to start things off. Then the middle half of the period was all London, and the latter half, mostly Brampton. Well, when you look at things, it was almost a tragic ending to the period by Chris Rowan. Really took, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, a bad penalty there late in the period and then coughed the puck up to Joel Sherbin, who had a great chance in there. And uh, Brian Finley able to step up big here now as the shots now favor the battalion. Or actually, sorry, they're now even at 18 apiece uh, here through two periods. And a 3-2 lead for the battalion as they head into the dressing room. Stay with us on OHL Primetime. We're going to come back with the second intermission as Kurt McSween joins Scott Van Sling. Stay with us on Rogers. Center for Sports and Entertainment with the Brampton Battalion. Currently lead the visiting London Knights 3-2. Joining me right now is uh, Kurt McSwain. And uh, Kurt, just a fantastic period. Uh, some of your thoughts on uh, some of your play over the first two periods of this game so far. Uh, well, we came out a little slow. We got let them get in the head in the shots and that. And then uh, we started picking up the second part of the first period. In the second period, we kind of played iffy at times. But with other times, we played well and we can control the game that way. Uh, Kurt, you guys came out with uh, guns blazing. You scored 28 seconds into the game, too, and uh, you assisted on the first goal. Uh, tell us a little bit about that first goal, Kurt, and uh, what happened, and uh, just a fantastic way to get the game started off for you guys. Yeah, it definitely helps the team out getting a goal early. We just kind of started. We got a three-on-two. I dropped it to Lucas, and he put it back to me, and I hit Rowan going to the net. We've had that a couple of chances. Other games doing that, too, so it worked out well tonight. 
And uh, with that assist, Kurt, uh, you've had uh, three assists in your last uh, two games here against the Knights, and they're also just two points away from the 100-point milestone in your OHL career. A fantastic milestone. Uh, some of your thoughts uh, leading up to the milestone coming up. You're only two points away, so some of your thoughts leading up to it. Uh, actually, I haven't thought too much about that point. So right now we're in a stretch run. I just want to get wins for the team and help the team out as I can that way. So. And uh, said the team's achieved a number of uh, personal milestones this year. Uh, you guys have uh, 27 wins uh, so far this season, 15 at home. You guys have been dominant at home, Kurt. And uh, just uh, some of your thoughts, uh, you know, leading in, you got six of the last nine at home. And uh, how does that feel, uh, you know, you guys have that, you know, that many games at home coming down the stretch run. It's got to be very important for you. Oh, definitely. We want to set the tone going into the playoffs at our home barn. Nobody wants to come in here and play us. So we want the home ice advantage. So we got to get a lot of wins at home here at the end of the season, too. Uh, next up for you guys is a trip down to Pennsylvania to play the Erie Otters, uh, third overall in the CHL, uh, dominant in the Western Conference leading. Uh, some of your thoughts on playing them tomorrow. You guys played them very well here last time with a 3-3 tie. Some of your thoughts about going down to Erie. Oh, definitely. We showed when we play our game that we can play with them any game we want. So tomorrow night will be another big test, but we just got to come out and play hard again. Seems like there's no uh, easy games on this schedule. I was talking with uh, Jeff Bateman in the first period. North Bay played you guys so tough here a couple weeks ago, and uh, like I said, tonight against London, uh, they're fighting for a playoff spot as well. Seems like, uh, like I said, a lot of jockeying going on in the uh, final weeks of the season. Some of your thoughts on that? Group? Oh, definitely. There's no, no one's going to be easy. Everyone's fighting for play, playoff position. Like London's fighting to get into the playoffs here tomorrow night. We play Erie, who's fighting for first overall in the conference, and then Kingston's fighting for first in their conference too. So we got tough games coming up with everyone left today. Right on. And uh, you personally, Kurt, just on a personal note, have you achieved a lot of the uh, personal goals you set out for yourself at the beginning of the season? Uh, are you living up to your own expectations so far this season? Uh, some of your thoughts on your own play this season, Kurt? Uh, to be honest, I've been a little disappointed with my uh, point out pro product. Uh, I was hoping to get a couple more points than what I can, but I'm just happy the team's starting to do well and we want to do well in the playoffs. So. Right on. And uh, great. Well, thanks very much, Kurt, and appreciate it. And uh, good luck the rest of the way and uh, also in the season and in the game. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks very much, Kurt. Thanks very much, and we'll be right back here at the Brampton Center where the battalion currently lead the London Knights 3 to 2. Stick around. Welcome back to the Brampton Center for Sports and Entertainment with the Brampton Battalion currently lead the London Knights 3-2. Right now we're going to go upstairs to Mike Hancock and Doug Anderson for some of their thoughts on the first two periods of play. And gentlemen, certainly not an easy game for the Battalion. Certainly no cakewalk. Uh, the London Knights are certainly playing them tough thus far. You know what, Scott? You're exactly correct on that one. London is playing very, very strong hockey throughout the middle of each period. And I'll tell you something. The Knights are only one opportunity away from tying this game up. And at the same time, I mean, the Brampton Battalion are no stranger to one-goal hockey games. As we talked about, 6-13 and 13 in 19 one-goal games that they played in this year. And, of course, not such a great record, but at the same time, Battalion, no stranger to this. And good for them right now is that they're on the upper end of things right now. Yeah, 18-18, the shots on goal after two periods of play. Really, it was neck and neck in the first period as well. But I'll tell you something, the Battalion, when they're getting their shots on goal, they're making their opportunities count. Aaron Molner's had to come up big a couple of times in the second period to keep this a one-goal hockey game. Yeah, like you say, the shots may sit even, but it's really been, I mean, all, you can almost say it's been a tale of two different periods in a sense, but like we tried to say at the end of the uh, first period, it's tough to really capsulize the way that this game has went just because yeah. of those two breaks in the middle of the periods, the 10-minute gap really through the, through the bulk of the middle part of each period has really been uh, London night hockey, but it hasn't been spectacular. You know, I'll tell you something. We all know that OA NHL hockey is dominated by special teams. If you have effective penalty killing and an effective power play unit, you're going to be very successful in the OHL. And that could be what tells what's going to happen here in the third period. Yeah, when you talk about that, we saw John Emminger really essentially goat Rafi Torres into a penalty, and the London Knights scored a power play goal, and that's obviously the big reason why they're only down by a goal right now. You know, very luckily as well, when Chris Rowan took that penalty with just two minutes and 38 seconds to go here in the second period, very lucky for the battalion players that they were able to step up their game one more notch, kill that one off, and go in the room with a one-goal lead. Yeah, and of course, uh, as we said at the end of that uh, <clears throat> second period, they, they narrowly got to the uh, finish line there in the second period. Chris Rowan steps out of the box, then coughs up the puck. Joel Sherman with a great chance to end off that period. But again, 
battalion go to the dressing room with once again a one goal lead. So right now you're Stan Butler and you're sitting in the dressing room and you've got one thing to say to your team. What's it going to be? Well, I might say two things. Obviously, get off to a fast start, but stay out of the box this period. I mean, you look yeah. at Rowan's penalty, Torres's penalty, two penalties that weren't so great, and they allowed London to keep the pressure on the battalion rather than the battalion being able to maybe give themselves a little bit more breathing room. You know, I'll tell you something. I'm very impressed by the way all four battalion regular defensemen have played in this hockey game. Uh, from Jason Maleko to uh, Rusty Klesla to Paul Flash, these guys have all really stood their ground inside their own zone and really made the plays when they had to inside their own zone. I guess they have a feeling they need to back up Ryan Finley just a little more right now. Yeah, I mean, Klesla was, I think, neutralized a little bit in the first period, but we saw him step up his play in the second. And like you've said throughout the broadcast tonight, Paul Flash has been fantastic. Let's go back down to Scott Van Slyke at ringside. And thank you very much, gentlemen. And more action coming up here from the second intermission where the London Knights currently trail the Brampton Battalion by a score of 3-2. to two. More second intermission coming up from the Brampton Center. Stick with us. Sports and Entertainment, where currently the London Knights trail the Brampton Battalion 3-2. Just a few moments ago, I spoke with Battalion Center Kirk McSwain, and right now we have a profile piece on the big center from the battalion. And Chuck tees it up, lets it fly, rebound, open net, they score! Kirk McSwain! Playing number 20 for the Brampton Battalion displays his intense involvement in many of his games and says that he was just a kid with a dream to play in the NHL. I was born in Alexandria, and that's about an hour past uh, Ottawa, and that's where I've grown up all my life. Just about a small town, about 3,500 people. Basically, like all other young kid in Canada growing up, when I, I was playing hockey all the time, and it was always a dream to play like NHL and make it far. So I just kind of kept going with it. I never really thought too much about it when I was playing younger. I just went out and played for the fun of it, but as I got older and played better levels, I kind of realized that I was getting closer and closer and kind of stepped up my uh, work ethic off the ice and training and everything to try to help develop myself to play better. And they've always been going to games, practices, they've been willing to drive me wherever and help me out and buy my equipment and everything. They keep coming up to games as many as they can up here, even though it's like a five-hour drive. Comes back to McSwain. Dirt McSwain gives it in for Chris Rowan. Back for McSwain. Loose puck. They score! What a great second effort by Kurt McSwain. Role models range from Kurt's parents to anyone with the drive to succeed and deliver an excellent performance on the ice. Role model-wise, I kind of just go after anyone who consider, consistently works hard and goes out and does their job. And uh, growing up, I was always a Maple Leaf fan. My father kind of got me in there. Kurt mentions how goaltender Brian Finley's return will be an advantage to the team and by increasing their chances of going far in this year's playoffs. Well, that's just extra confidence. Like we know we went last year, you made it all the way to Memorial Cup. So you know that he's a goalie who's experienced and can win in the playoffs. One of the major skills that Kurt believes needs attention is in his feet work. One of my biggest skills is just my extra foot speed, being able to take off faster and all that. And then uh, I think kind of finishing around the net a little more too. I'm not really expecting to get drafted this year. I just want to hopefully get a... a try out somewhere and be able to get on with some team. At the Brampton Center, I'm Michelle Javid. And Kirk McSween has an assist on the battalion's first goal, where the battalion currently lead the London Knights 3-2 here at the Brampton Center. Right now we're going to throw it up to the best play-by-play -play calling team in the OHL, Doug Anderson and Mike Hancock. Thanks, Scott. Minute and 40 seconds before we kick off this third period of play, Hammer. And the battalion head to the ice with a one-goal lead and a precarious one-goal lead. And, you know, we've touched on it a couple of times, but really, I'm impressed with this London forward line led by Joel Sherman and the way they've been able to tie up the big three of the battalion. Yeah, Sherman's been great. I mean, we saw him force the turnover there at the end of the period, and... I mean, the battalion's big three, though. I mean, you got to look at them as they've done a great job as well tonight. But still, Ricky Nash, my early pick, is at least a star in tonight's game. An early pick? <laughs> yes. Yeah, like... Still got 20 minutes of hockey like, to play, though. Like 21 minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know if we're going to be able to live up to that billing here in the third period, though. Uh, we live up to it every day of yeah. our lives. Sure thing, sure thing. So again, as we look to start this third period of play, something we talked about is the battalion getting off to a really a good start in this period. Both teams are obviously going to be trying to come out and get off to a quick start, but definitely I think the key here in the third period is the Brampton Battalion out to stay out of the penalty box. That's kind of the door that they've continually opened throughout the second period for the London Knights to step back in and possibly tie things up, giving them the man advantage. And guys like Torres, when you get Torres in the box, not a good sign. And the penalties that Torres and Rowan took there in the second period were definitely not good ones. Interesting to see the McSwain, Hobble, and Rowan line kicking off each period of play so far. Stathopoulos is out there with Nash and Aaron Lott. Plesla sidesteps the check, plays it along the boards. Sullyan can't keep it in. Rowan gets it away for McSwain. Tips it ahead. Here's a break for Hovel. Offside is called. Boy, a great opportunity to kick off the third period. Lucas Hovel behind the defense. Aaron McSwain hit him on the tape, but just offside. Yeah, and when you talk about getting off to a quick start and who's playing the best for you, you definitely want to start your best line at the start of the period. And Lucas Hovel, definitely one of the best battalion tonight, and especially Kurt McSwain, a guy, uh, well, a guy we spoke to there in the second intermission. But McSwain's been a little bit of a troublemaker tonight, I think you could say. Lasla has it poked away from him. Here's Nash from the top of the circle. Shot! Finley with the save. Rebound! Maleko can't clear it. Puck comes loose to the blue line. Hovel clears it to the open wing. It goes off a body and is kept to the battalion blue line where Stathopoulos steps across center and dumps it back in. Boy, Finley completely lost the shot after it hit him. It dribbled toward the crease area. Davies picks that off. We've got it delayed offside as Klesla gathers it up. Rusty Klesla turns inside his own zone. They'll now wave it down. So two great opportunities, one at each end of the rink in the first minute of play here in the third period. And Nash uh, making sure that he doesn't make me look bad here has a great chance to start off the third period. He puts the pressure on the battalion. And yeah, Finley was down and out there for uh, almost a couple of chances there for the Knights. He was down, didn't get back up too quickly and was even facing in the opposite direction of the play. Nifty move by Bateman at the blue line. He clears it in the corner. Van Lusen battles with it. Van Lusen and Eminger come together. Sherbin plays it around the boards. Bois, after this one, comes away. Cleared into the front of the net. That's Eminger with the puck. Eminger, the bright yellow stick, lugs it through the blue line and clears it into the neutral zone. Weidman takes the hit from Bateman and this is played into the battalion end. Harrison with time, leaves it for Bateman. Bateman goes cross ice, flash side steps a check, follows up with the loose puck. Hunter with a good pass. Sherman shot, he scores! Sorry, that was Burnham with the wrist shot, beating Brian Finley. Wow, we've seen London uh, really looking like a team of sharpshooters. Anytime that they've got those chances all alone, uh, those are the kind of chances that really don't favor a goaltender. Well, Logan Hunter with a great pass at the blue line to send Burnham in. And boy, he let it fly. Yeah, Burnham's quick wrister uh, caught Finley a little bit by surprise, but the battalion just have to do a better job in their own end. They can't allow London to get those kind of opportunities. It may sound simple, but they're not doing it. So a 3-3 hockey game. Lots of hockey to be played here in the Brampton Center. 18-22 to go here in the third period. Chambers has it at the blue line. Henrik steps in and fires it as McClemon is stuck inside the blue line. Offside is called. 21-18 the shots on goal. So three quick shots from the Knights have tied this hockey game. 
And we now get a look at Brian Finlay kind of hanging his head a little bit there after that stoppage of play, maybe trying to refocus on the task at hand here. As things are knotted up at three now as the London Knights for the team to get off to the quick start here at the opening of the third period. Hunter gets it across the blue line. Henrik is there, gives the puck away. Held tries to give it inside of the battalion end, but it's knocked away from him. Bonus after it on Chambers. Henrik and Bonus come together on Chambers. Held gives the puck away. Hunter heading towards the bench as it poked away from him. Klesla at his own blue line. He fans on the pass to Maleko. Maleko back for Klesla. Klesla in front of his own zone. Boy, Rusty Klesla dangerously in front of his own net. Henrik after Chambers. Henrik ties Chambers up. Allowing Clayton to get in on the play, and Thompson hops the boards as well. This is Nash to the outside. Flash does a good job to keep him to the outside and plays the puck around the boards for Harrison. Harrison outlet pass, bounced off the glass. Turner can't control it. Thompson runs into him. Lob comes away with the puck. Lob for Selyan. Across his own blue line, feeds it towards the middle. Harrison is there, goes off a boot and loose puck for Lob. Lob in front of the net. Loose puck is cleared. Henrik does a good job to get it out of harm's way. Paul Flash bouncing there in the corner. Clayton comes away with the puck for the battalion. Steps across center, gets it a pass. Sellian into the corner and LaRue on the far side with Turner. Let's it go, Lob and Malenko. Lob and Malenko together at the blue line. Nash has the puck now for London. Drops it off for Stathopoulos. At center ice for Ian Turner. Gets away from him, but Swain misses the check. Davies off stride. Malenko then takes to the body and runs him out of real estate in the corner. Flash to the far boards. LaRue chops at it. There's Weidman's shot. He rips it wide. Eminger. Plays it in the corner. Waugh gets knocked off stride by Maleko. McSwain takes to his man. Sherman and McSwain come together. Waugh at the blue line for Weidman with time. Drifts one towards the front of the net. Flash turns and fires it off the glass. Eminger keeps it in at the blue line. Maleko gets it away and LaRue fires it the length of the ice. Hobel down quickly to touch it. And icing is called as Hobel couldn't get to it. Boy, a great effort from Lucas Havel. He just lost an edge going in the corner. Yeah, he was the first one down there, but he just missed the puck. And, uh, I mean, again, Lucas Havel continues to be one of the best battalion tonight as we quickly look at our out-of-town scores in the second period. Windsor leads Ottawa 2-0. Obviously, again, the battalion are keeping a close eye on tonight. And the Peterborough Peets lead the Toronto St. Michael's Majors by a score of 2-1. to one. That game also in the second period. Sherman Davies and Bois up front for the Knights. 15.43 to go in the third period. Eminger has it at the point. Plays it into the open corner. Klesla pokes at it. Rowan on the far board. He gets knocked down by Bois. Deflected in front. Finley got a piece of that one as Maleko was tied up. Klesla outlet pass. Good job. Right on the table. Hobble. McSwain heads to the front of the net. He's tied up from behind by Weidman. Rowan in front. Havel couldn't pick up the loose puck. Knocked down by Klesla. McSwain in the corner. Kurt McSwain with time. Tries to make his way around Weidman. Rowan bumped off the puck by Davies. Comes to McSwain. McSwain back to the point. Klesla's wrist shot. Partially blocked by Bois. Maleko then dumps it in the corner for McSwain. Weidman after this. McSwain still has the puck. Finally it's Davies swooping in and picking it up. Davies from center, clears it inside the battalion in. This is Klesla with room to roam as both teams change on the fly. Klesla sidesteps the check from Stathopoulos. Across the blue line, drop pass is a giveaway as Van Lusen was right on top of it with Aaron Lobb. Van Lusen for Bateman. Jeff Bateman's red shot, it goes just over top of the net. Boy, Bateman cut Molnar off stride on that one. Fired it from the quick wrist shot at the top of the blue line and went just over top of the net. 
I don't think Mulner saw that one coming. Zellian dumps it in the corner. Finley out of his net to leave it for Flash. Flash with time. Nash, run off stride. Paul Flash has the puck. Good pass looking for Bateman. Bateman across to the top of the circle. Van Lusen heads to the front of the net. Bateman tied up by Turner. Goes after it with Sellian. Torres jumps in on the play. Bateman has the puck in front, shoots it off the side of the net. Turner clears it. Stathopoulos has it. He has a man, Nash, heading towards the middle and couldn't get him the, pay, the play. Flash fans on the shot. Turner will clear it. And Nash heads to the bench. Picked up by Van Lusen. Aaron Van Lusen dumps it cross ice. Torres Van Lusen and Baseman in unison head to the bench. This is Ryan Held inside his own zone. Henrik right on top of him as Held goes deep for Sherbin. Klesla after Sherman. Klesla takes the puck away. Bounced around the boards. Good continuous action here in the Brampton Center for the past three minutes. Thompson bumps Hell. Hunter tries to get it in front. Klesla plays it in the corner. Along the near boards, Thompson takes the hit from behind from Held. And Hunter, his shot goes off a skate. Henrik through the middle for Thompson. Here's Thompson with a burst of speed. Thompson's got a man with them. Tries to feed McClemmon as he was cutting toward the top of the slot area. Ryan held back the other way. Through the middle and it's cleared the length of the ice. That'll be right on net. Molnar will steer that aside as Junkins is back to pick it up. We got a penalty going, and it looks like it's against Ryan Held as he took a shot at Adam Henrik right in front of the battalion bench, and he's going off. Boy, that is not a penalty when you're heading to the bench that your coach wants to see you take. Well, I was going to say, we've seen, uh, you know, a few minutes of good action. We've got to see, you know, all three, top three lines for both of these teams roll over on some great, great uh, sustained play there. Well, we're about a three-minute stretch, and you, know, when you start to see that play go on for that long a time. You always wait for the other shoe to drop kind of thing, and uh, nobody able to create any real great scoring opportunities out of that whole thing, but the battalion able to move the puck very well through the neutral zone, but not really create anything fantastic. So the face-off deep inside of the London Knights end. Stathopoulos out to kill this one off up front with uh, Rick Nash. Eminger and Whiteman manning the point on the power play. You'll have Klesla and Maleko manning the points with Torres, Bateman, and Van Lusen up front. Torres wins this faceoff. Comes back to Klesla with time for Maleko. Tries to go through to the top of the slot to Torres, and it goes off the stick of Stathopoulos. Stathopoulos following up the play. Maleko has it behind his own net. Maleko for Torres. Back to Maleko. Rusty Klesla's at his own blue line. Klesla makes his move around Nash. Still has the puck, and it's taken away by Eminger and cleared out of the blue line. Torres with time, bounces it to the open wing. Stathopoulos then turns and clears it back inside of the battalion end. Here's Torres. Shifting gears into high speed to the outside. Torres going wide. Loose puck. It's cleared to the blue line, and offside is called. 117 to go in the power play for the Brampton Battalion. 1143 left in the third period. We're all tied at three. And you're watching OHL Primetime live on Rogers Sports. Doug Anders in the hammer, Mike Hancock, and Scott Van Slyke bringing you all the action. Of course, each team here tonight does have a power play goal. Ryan Held struck for a power play marker in the second period. And of course, Rafi Torres scored on the power play dying moments of the first period but really other than those two power plays neither team has created a lot of great chances and so far through the first 43 seconds of this man advantage for the battalion they haven't created anything at all Malenko plays it around the boards Hobble can control it bounces to the point kept in by Klesla good job Rusty and took three cracks at it to keep it in at the blue line cleared the length of the ice and just a minute to go in the power play Finley leaves it for Maleko. McSwain, Hobble, and Rowan up front. Hobble gives it to Rowan. Rowan back to the blue line. Back for Rowan. Rowan with time. Klesla back for Rowan at the circle. In the corner. Down deep for Hobble to the point. 
There's Maleko's shot. It goes just over top of the net. Hobble can control it. Weidman gets it to the blue line, and Sherbin clears it the length of the ice. Klesla, outlet pass, sidesteps a check. Henrik gets away with that one. Klesla still has it, tries to feed Havel. And McClemmon heading toward the front of the net. Turner plays it ahead for Nash. It gets ahead of him. And Harrison's there to leave it to his own blue line. Klesla steps across center, fires it in the corner. After it is Henrik, bounces with Stathopoulos. Here comes Turner gathering it up. Ian Turner through the middle for London. Turner. Trying to make a move on Flash, splits the D, but Harrison's there to take it away. Cleared to the blue line. Turner gives it over for Burnham. Burnham looking for Hunter. Loose puck in front. Finley kicks that aside. Torres comes back deep to play it behind his own net. Harrison leaving it there. Burnham gives it back to Junkins at the point. Played off the glass. Hunter looking in front. Burnham can't get there. McClement now takes the body to Burnham. Hunter tries to put it in front again, and Thompson's there to take it away. Boy, Hunter with a couple of opportunities. Thompson's shot. He missed low to the stick side. Scott Thompson fought off a check to get a shot away, and Flash follows up with the play. Poked away from him by Chambers at the blue line. Sherman hammered at the blue line by Jason Maleko. Van Lusen sidesteps the check. Hook from behind. Looking to get it for Bateman, who dumps it in the corner. Junkins after this one. Junkins behind the net. Giveaway pass. Shot from Bateman right on. Mulner kicks that aside. Nine minutes to go here in the third period. That one goes down the ice and will be touched by Rusty Klesla to bring it all the way back. Wow, we're seeing some real feistiness now from both clubs. Of course, this is a big, big game. I mean, it even gets bigger for the Brampton Battalion as the Windsor Spitfires leading their game tonight. They don't want to fall behind them in the West Conference standings. And something I really like tonight for the Brampton Battalion seems to be the overall grittiness of their forwards. You know, it's maybe even a playoff grittiness, if you will. But it's something they've been using their speed a little bit more to the outside and just, you know, maybe getting the glove up in the face a little bit more often as well. Torres wins the face off, but it's Nash that comes away with the puck for London. From center ice, Klesla there to give it away. Klesla back for Torres, looking for Van Lusen through the middle, goes off the stick and over top of the glass. You know, Hammer, you talk about playoffs, and the four game playoff ticket packages have gone on sale to the general public today for Brandon Battalion. Uh, single game playoff tickets available as of Monday, March the 19th. Ticket prices for the first round games. Boy, what great value here at the Brampton Center. $14.50 gets you a club seat, $11.50 for the sides, and $9.50 for the end seats. Gallery seats will be made available on a game to game basis. They'll be $12.50. Boy, you can't even go see a bad movie in a theater for $12 anymore. <laughs> and when you look at things right now, it could be an incredible first round matchup. He could see Jason Spezza and the Windsor Spitfires. And of course, he's Branson Battalion hooking up in the first round, which would be a fantastic matchup. Torres bumps Nash. Stathopoulos stood up by Maleko. Centering pass out in front. It goes off a of skate. Nash goes down heavily. Bounced around the boards. Torres has the puck. Torres with some room to roam through the neutral zone. Torres to the outside. Weidman watching him plays it in the corner. Eminger back to pick it up. Bateman after him. He ties up Eminger. Lobb has it, and he should flip it through the zone, but it's kept at the blue line by Torres. Harrison has to just poke it ahead after losing control. Gets it for Bateman at center ice. Weidman and Bateman come together. Well, Jeff Bateman went down heavily on that play as Weidman got a piece of him. I think even when they collided, though, I think Weidman may have come down with a skate or his leg or something may have caught him. I don't know if we're going to be able to take another look at this. but I don't know if we got that on the replay, but boy, Jeff Bateman went down very heavily. But I think, I don't know if it was the initial real impact of the collision. I think it may have been Weidman landing on top of him in some form or fashion. But uh, 
Bateman doesn't appear to be moving. We'll see what we can catch here on the replay as they come along and collide. And wow, Bateman just uh, landed face first, it appears, on the ice. Really got his feet chopped out from under him as he was up top. Landed uh, face down. And actually, Doug, I mean, when we look at that, that kind of reminds you of a hit from uh, a number of years ago in the NHL. Kevin Stevens, uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins, went into the corner with Rich Pilon of the uh, New York Islanders. Don't ask me why I remember this, but uh, Stevens was out before he hit the ice and landed face first. And I don't know if that's the same situation well, that happened yeah, here let's not, to Bateman, uh, but uh, it kind of, it's, when you look at that, a little bit reminiscent in the fact Bateman really hasn't moved at all uh, since the play was blown down. Well, take a look at it one more time, Hammer. You, you see, as they both guys collided, here's what, there you see it right there. And Bateman is up and onto his feet, and, and that's exactly when it, when they both collided. It was Weidman threw the hip into him right away. It was a clean check from Weidman. Uh, really just caught Jeff Bateman at the wrong angle. Bateman's going to head off into the dressing room with 7.44 to go here in the third period. And that is a big loss for the Brampton Battalion up front. Of course, with 7.44 to go, an overtime looming large in this one right now. I'll have to see if Jeff Bateman will return for this game. Uh, not known, obviously, whether he's just shaken up or... Well, the doors open to the penalty box for the London Knights. There's a five minute penalty on the board for Weidman. Wow, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's a tough penalty to take with only 7.44 to go in this hockey game and a tied hockey game. Weidman getting his uh, words into referee Pierce as he heads off. And I guess Weidman's got a game misconduct in this one as well. Yeah, I guess this five minute major is accompanying a uh, game misconduct here. And wow, 7.44 to go. Obviously, if you're Coach Lindsey Hofford over there right now having a couple of words with, with the officials, uh, you can't be happy about that. I don't know if that warranted a five minute major, but uh, I don't know if we can have a, another look at the hit, but. Uh, Interesting to see. Yeah, this. the first angle we saw was a was a good angle at how both bodies collided on this one. And I'll tell you something. Here comes the angle right here. See. Watch Bateman on the near side, and it's a hip check, and it's actually the elbow of Weidman that catches Bateman in the side of the jaw. Yeah, it's one of those things that uh, <clears throat> we saw really the actually the OHA try to crack down on a little bit more in uh, Tier Two Junior A this year is head checking. And I don't know if that's the call here or not, but. Uh, but that last angle we saw, we saw referee Pierce coming up on the play as well, but he did not have his hand up when the hit was made. So obviously a decision that he made after the fact. I mean, it's clear to see, I think, here, Weidman brings his hands or his arms or, or something up he into the He threw his face. elbow right into his head. But look, as you watch, the referee behind there does not have his hand up as both players are down on the ice. So he really assessed the damage, saw Bateman was hurt and will be gone for the rest of the game, and then decided to assess his penalty. Well, I think that'll be the really interesting thing here to see if Bateman is truly gone for the rest of the game, because I'm sure if Bateman's able to return, uh, that can't sit well with Coach Lindsey Hofford if he's lost Weidman for the rest of the game. But now you know why Lindsey Hofford had the conversation with Pierce, uh, the referee, was because he says, hey, what if this guy comes back after Lovely two minutes? So Weidman deservedly gets a penalty, as we said. We don't know if it's worth five minutes, but it is a penalty. There's a shot, goes off to the side. Torres has the puck. So a great opportunity for the battalion to jump on front, jump out in front. This is Van Lusen for Torres. Back to the point for Maleko. For Klesla, caught up in his skates. Looking for Klesla again. Klesla is the trigger man. It's finally cleared down the ice by Ian Turner. Boy, Turner's played an outstanding game defensively for this Knights Hockey Club. Klesla for Maleko. He plays it inside the Knights end. Torres right on top of it. Dumps it behind the net for McClement. McClement back for Maleko. Plays it back in the corner. Torres for Van Lusen. 
Aaron Van Lusen back for Rafi Torres with time at the circle. Not even forced. Torres looks for Van Lusen. Comes to Van Lusen behind the net. Up for Torres to the side of the net. Tries to step out in front. And Maleko does a good job to keep it in. Drifts a shot right on. Rebound. McClemmon with two big opportunities. And Moeller comes up huge for the Knights. Torres bouncing puck. Back to the point. Maleko with time. Back to Torres. Tipped away. Here's Nash on a break. And Klesla will get to the puck first. Boy, Tat. Boy, did Rick Nash have a great opportunity. I don't think he had much gas left in the tank. And you got to wonder, when a team gets a five-minute man advantage, how complacent they get, and really maybe in some cases just take too much time trying to set things up. Pavel behind the net for Rowan. London doing a very good job of pressuring the, London, pressuring the Brampton players to make that quick play and there's a penalty going against the battalion looks like Chris Rowan is going on so with 258 remaining in the penalty and Weidman's penalty that's being served by Andy Burnham it's going to be Rowan going to the box for the next two minutes 542 to go in this hockey game so now both teams will be even four on four for the next two minutes the battalions still have the opportunity to have a 58 second power play once the penalty to Chris Rowan expires, but the Italian may be trying to make things look a little bit too pretty. I don't know, but London Knights doing a great job so far in uh, killing the first two minutes, two seconds of that man advantage, but definitely, I mean, not a penalty you want to take again if you're Chris Rowan. Klesla hauled down. Wah comes away with the puck. Gives it to Sherman on the break. Maleko back in as he fired a shot just over top of the net. Eminger pinches up at the blue line. Comes back to Bois. He's got time. Feeds Turner to the outside. And McSwain bounces Turner into the corner. Maleko with time. Bois watching him. Feeds it around the boards. Hobble can't keep it in. Tries to poke it past Eminger. Loose puck goes back in the corner. Maleko then knocks his man down. Klesla still has the puck. Klesla tries to tip it aside. Maleko looking to give it a hobble. Wap falls in the puck and a stoppage in play. 2-11 left in Burnham finishing off the penalty for Weinman. A buck 13 in the penalty to Rowan and 4.55 in the third period. 25-23 the shots on goal thus far. Interesting to see how many chances really that the battalion are going to take on this four on four situation knowing that if they play their cards right and don't run into any more penalty trouble they'll still have roughly a 58 second man advantage at the tail end of the Rowan penalty. Stathopoulos and Nash up front for the Knights. Sullivan and Turner manning the point for the battalion up front. Van Lusen and Torres with Flash and Harrison on the point. Van Lusen gives it for Harrison, for Torres through the middle. Raffi makes his move on net. Flash clears it inside of the Knights end. Turner plays it around the board. Stathopoulos with the puck. Stathopoulos going through the middle looking for Nash, picked off by Torres. Turns and he fires one right on. Molnar steers that aside with the blocker. Bounced around the board. Paul Flash can't get to it quickly enough as it comes out of the blue line and goes through the neutral zone, giving the Knights a chance to change all four players. Flash inside his own zone with time. Plays it through the middle. Knocked away. Here's Torres with a break. Torres across the blue line. Raffi to the outside. Sellian does a good job to keep him. There's a shot from Thompson that Molnar had to be right on top of. Klesla keeps it in. Klesla has the puck at the blue line. Rusty trying to go to the top of the slot. Torres will have it in the corner. Sillian watching Torres. Tries to kick at it, get it away. And Held can't clear the zone. Held turns around and tries it again. Loose puck and Torres has it. 
Torres then just rifled it off the foot of McClemmon. Last lock keeps it in at the blue line. Eminger will turn and dump it through the neutral zone where McSwain picks it up. Hobble. Wah tying up Hobble. Loose puck. A little bit of sloppy play from both sides in the neutral zone as McSwain wheels away now. Kurt McSwain watched by Sherbin. McSwain tied up by Eminger. Gets it back for McClemmon. Brampton still on the power play for another 10 seconds to the side of the net. McClemmon can control it. Looking for Hobble. Eminger will play it in the corner. Boy, London's done a great job to kill off this Brampton power play. Malenko to the side of the net as Burnham is back on the ice. McClemmon can control it. Malenko pinches in to keep it in at the blue line. McClemmon plays it for Klesla. Watched by Bois. His shot toward the front of the net. Nobody in front to get a piece of that one. Malenko knocks the puck down. Burnham takes a shot at it, and Klesla's there to knock it away. McClement leaves it for Malenko. Steps across the blue line, gives it to Havel. Heading towards the front of the net is Rowan, and it's bounced off the board. Havel has the puck to the side of the net. Turner goes down. Rowan follows up with the puck. Under two minutes to go. McClement one-timer fanned on it. Boy, Jay McClement had to stick up and cock the trigger that couldn't unload. Malenko follows up, and we got a Brampton penalty going. It looks like... It's Ryan Held, I think, who was knocked down in front of the London net. It's Jason Malenko going off. A little bit of over-exuberance from the battalion captain. Wow, so the London Knights survived the five-minute major for elbowing. And now they'll go on the power play here for essentially the rest of regulation time and who knows, possibly a few ticks into the extra frame. So 144 here to go now. It's crunch time here for both teams. Well, not, it, it's doubly effective if they, for the battalion if they lose their captain, but not only that, they lose one of their major penalty killers. So we've got a timeout call. Not surprising here. The Knights, of course, just, uh, as we've mentioned, survived the five-minute major. And I think this may just be a chance to rest and regroup here and realize they're going on the power play, get things in order. This is a big, big power play with just 144 to go here in the in regulation. Yeah, it looks like Lindsey Hofford is going over exactly what he wants his group of players to be doing. And of course, you're going to see out there Ian Turner, number 77. And Turner, I'll tell you something, he has been one of the top three players in this hockey game. He has played a lot of ice time, but he's also made sure that wherever the play is, he's on top of it, and he is squared to the play, making sure that uh, Aaron Muller in the net is getting a good view of everything that's happening deep inside his own zone. Brampton Killers here will consist of Van Lusen and McSwain up front with Harrison and Klesla patrolling the backside. Harrison clears it inside of the night's end. Turner back to pick it up. So for the final minute and 33 seconds of this hockey game, or of this third period rather, we'll see the Knights on the power play. Harrison goes in the corner. McSwain can control it. Loose puck as Lobb falls on it. Klesla pokes at it and comes away with the puck. Rusty Klesla with time turns and banks it off the glass in the length of the ice. 103 to go here in the third period. Turner behind his net will leave it for Stathopoulos. Stathopoulos dumps it back for Turner. The give and go to Stathopoulos tips it ahead to Sherbin. Sherbin's got Lobb heading toward the front of the net. Nash pinches in from the near side. Klesla pokes at his man. Harrison comes away with the puck. Harrison turns and gets it across the blue line. 
Brampton looking to just send this into overtime. Thompson knocks that one down. Klesla pokes at it and gets it back inside the London end. Both teams making some wholesale changes as Held cuts across the center ice area. Held's got Eminger with him. Eminger back to Held in front. Picked off by McSwain. It goes in the corner. Held back to the blue line. Turner with the backhand pass. Giveaway and is cleared down the ice. For the last 12 seconds of this third period, Molnar will leave it for Eminger. Eminger turns on the wheels. McSwain takes a shot at him and lets his one fly. And that's all the way down the ice and does it for the third period of play. We're going to go to overtime, Hammer, and I'll tell you something. The Battalion have 16 more seconds to kill off in this power play. They will be back at full strength. That has got to be a big lift to kill one off like that in the latter half of this third period. Yeah, but at the same time, Dougie, I think if you're Lindsey Hofford or if you're Stan Butler, you really can't be happy with the way things went in the third period. Each team had great chances, extended amounts of time, up a man, and neither team could put the game away. And uh, I mean, especially if you're the Branson Battalion, they, you know, they were through that five minute stretch, three out of the five minutes, they were up a man and couldn't put the game away. And I mean, if, if the battalion are able to escape this penalty trouble that they found themselves in, a key that I talked about in the, heading into the third period was that Branson had to stay out of the box. And uh, I mean, at the worst time possible, they decided to run into some penalty trouble. And of course, as you mentioned, 16 seconds to go in the penalty assessed to Jason Maleko. And of course, goaltending, as always in overtime, will be huge. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, of course, with this overtime, same style as the National Hockey League, four on four here. And the battalion will be starting shorthanded. You know, and usually four on four is a great benefit to the battalion. They've got flying forwards, and their defensemen can certainly keep up with the other team's forwards. But in this one, the Knights have a, a, a bit of speed up front as well with guys like Nash. Yeah, of course. I mean, if you're picking who's going to score the overtime goal, I think tonight so far for the London Knights, you got to go with Ricky Nash. He's been the most dynamic player out there for them. Whereas if you're the Brampton Battalion, who you're picking to score the overtime winner, I don't know if there's an easy choice tonight, Dougie. Well, tonight, no, but throughout the season, we've uh, seen clutch plays from guys like McSwain, guys like Torres, and guys like Havel. And I think another guy you want to throw into that mix who's had a good game tonight is Aaron Van Leusen, who's uh, been doing it well at both ends of the ice tonight as we're about set to drop the puck here to start overtime tonight at the Brampton Center. Funny how we always choose a forward to score the game-winning goal, and we overlook guys like Klesla and guys like Eminger. Now yeah, we'll start out of the interesting situation here. Of course, we'll have a lot of ice to work with, so it'll be four on three to start things off. You know, we talk about important face-offs, and important face-offs that Kurt McSwain has won. None is bigger than this face-off at center ice. He wins it, Van Leusen gathers it up. They need to break off this last 14 seconds. McSwain right in on goal, has time, shot! Mulder with the save, rebound! Another opportunity, comes back to Klesla. He can't get it to the front of the net. What a great opportunity, Aaron Mulder comes up big. Nash with a burst of speed, Maleko's back on the ice. We got a penalty going against the battalion. As Maleko touches the puck. Looks like Aaron Van Lusen is going off. And wow, there may be a lot of ice out there, but how do you let that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the battalion with a great chance there. Short-handed, four on three, and it'll be a holding call going against the Branson Battalion as they'll be short-handed again here. It's not going to be the battalion. The battalion will move oh. to the power play. Nash is the one getting the penalty, holding Kurt McSwain in the corner. And uh, that's what the conversation was about in the corner, that they felt that it was Nash that took McSwain down in the corner. McSwain got the hit, and Nash was the one who grabbed them and hauled them both down. So a huge opportunity for the battalion to finish off this overtime. A two-minute power play with 4.35 to go and four on three hockey. Yeah, interesting just to watch that play. You saw the way the two guys went down and into the corner. You'd think it would be 
the uh, defensive player in that situation would be heading off for the penalty, but obviously Rick Nash had a hold of something going down there into the corner. So the Brampton Battalion, hey, turnabout's fair play. The London Knights had a little bit of a power play here to start off the overtime oh, yeah, period, but now Brampton Battalion, a golden opportunity as if they haven't been handed enough of them tonight, but here comes Rusty Klesla. Klesla has it pickpocketed from him. Bois steps across center, gives it to Sherbin. Sherbin's got Bois heading toward the front of the net. Backhand. Finley just got a piece of that one, a floater, and Klesla will leave the puck. Klesla has it. Outlet pass for Rafi Torres. Torres and Havel. Torres to the outside. Eminger stepped over the boards. There's a shot. It goes off the side of the net. Rafi let it fly off the wrong foot. He then runs over Ian Turner. Eminger steps on the ice. As does Stathopoulos. Klesla gathers the puck up. Steps inside the blue line. Tries to set up. Let's one fly right on. Molnar saw that one as he got it off the blocker. Comes to Klesla again with time for Maleko. Wrist shot. Van Lusen at the side couldn't control it. Comes back to Klesla. Klesla for Torres. Lots of time. Raffi lets it fly. Scores! Raffi Torres! The battalion went up. with the kind of offensive weapons the Branson Battalion have. Rusty Klesla, Rusty Klesla and Rafi Torres just pretty much took things over there and moving the puck back through the points, getting those shots from the outside. Again, the key to victory tonight for the Brampton Battalion and Rafi Torres. I was about to say, you know, it's got to be a little bit disappointing that neither of these teams have been able to put this game away when they've been handed the chance. And finally here in overtime, the Brampton Battalion are the team who steps up and buries this thing as we'll take another look at the Brampton power play here, Doug. And a huge goal as Maleko finally does the job of standing in front. Maleko makes sure as Torres let it fly. And our three stars for tonight, Rusty Klesler, the number one star, Ricky Nash, the number two star, and Rafi Torres, the number three star here from the Brampton Center. We're going to take a break on OHL primetime, and we'll be coming right back with more from the Brampton Center. overtime win. Standing by with me now is the game's hero and first star, Rafi Torres. Rafi, just a fantastic game for you guys and uh, what a way to pull it out in the final minutes in overtime. Uh, tell us some of your thoughts about what happened on the goal, Rafi. Well, I was lucky enough to get the puck over from uh, Klesla who gave me a wide open shot. Um, I think I had a lot of time there to wind up. So, you know, we got we got uh, we had a good screen in front of the net. I'm not sure who it was, but, you know, that's what it takes and we just got it in there and, uh, you know, now we have to worry about Erie tomorrow. And uh, like some of your thoughts about going down to Erie, Rafi, uh, you tied them 3-3 here, and I uh, spoke with two of your teammates uh, throughout the game, and uh, boy, it doesn't get any easier for you this weekend. Not at all, uh, but I think we got a lot of confidence after tonight and the way we played against Erie. Uh, it's going to be a good game tomorrow, especially in here. It's going to, you know, we're going to learn a lot about what, it, what we got and what we got to work on through the last uh, seven games of the season. Right, and then uh, have you guys uh, sort of uh, maybe talked a little bit of game strategy already, or uh, pretty much uh, talked out on the bus on the way down? Definitely, uh, we'll talk it on the way bus, on the way down on the bus. Uh, we know what we got to do. We got to go out there and hit and play the way uh, we play, and uh, that's hitting and uh, first first guys on the puck and stuff like that. So as long as we do that, we'll be all right. Rafi, uh, thanks very much for joining us. And congratulations on the goal and just a fantastic way to finish up tonight. Thanks a lot. And that's all. That's Rafi Torres, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's first star. And uh, on behalf of uh, Doug Anderson, Mike Hancox, and all the rest of the Rogers crew, I'm Scott Van Slyke. Thank you very much for joining us here at the Brampton Center, where the Brampton Battalion pulled it a thrilling overtime victory. Have a good evening.